It's a visual we will never forget. Spectacular yet stunning. We go from the beaches in Daytona to the Arizona desert. The scenery may have changed, but the challenge remains the same for the best drivers in the world. That's Car on Fox. Welcome to the Phoenix International Raceway. And we're getting ready to go 312 miles with Matt Kenseth, the Daytona 500 winner, trying to start the season 2-0. Dale Earnhardt Jr. after a second-place finish, a two-time winner here. Casey Kane won the last time we raced on this newly reworked track. And Carl Edwards hoping to show he's the most fit for the Fresh Fit Subway 500. Blue skies, temperature in the 80s. Uh, and there is uh, Tony Stewart, his best qualifying effort at Phoenix as he starts second. The second race of 36 points races in the NASCAR season as we're getting ready to roll here 20 miles from Phoenix. Let's head down trackside for opening ceremonies. Race fans, at this time, we ask that you please rise and remove your hats as the Luke Air Force Base Color Guard present our nation's colors. And please remain standing as Phoenix International Raceway Chaplain Ken Bowers offers today's invocation. Heavenly Father, today we celebrate freedom, blood-bought freedom that we can all enjoy. We thank you for the freedom that we have to be here at Phoenix International Raceway today. And I conclude my prayer with the words of our granddaughter Keegan this morning as she prayed, Dear Lord, help the drivers to go fast Keep all of us safe and no one gets hurt, and may we all have a good time. This we pray in your name, and everyone said, Amen. And now to sing our national anthem, please welcome national recording star Brian McKnight and his sons, Broken Robot BJ and Nico. <laughs> Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hail at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight all the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rockets red the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that Ready, Regan Smith ready to roll as well. Only four winners from the pole in 31 races here in Phoenix. All right, we're just minutes away from the green flag, and I'm trackside hanging out with some of Subway's famous fans, Jared Fogle, Carl Edwards, and Dominican Sue. Oh, and Hammond's here, too. So, uh, and Dominican, what are some of the perks of being the Grand Marshal? Well, for starters, I got the best seat in the house at the Subway Fresh Fit 500. Whoa, whoa, whoa. That's the second best seat, man. Come on. He got you there, Dominican. I mean, after all, he is starting 24th today in the Subway Ford. And speaking of starting, Jared, I always love to start my day with a Subway breakfast sandwich with all the vegetables on it. Hey, 
Hollywood. Yeah. You know what makes a steak, egg, and cheese sandwich better? No, I don't. When you add plenty of jalapenos to it. Now, that's a great way to start your day. Uh, no, for me, <laughs> all those jalapenos, man. But you can put some green peppers, some red onions on my black forest egg and ham. I, I love that. So, I did not know that. Well, here's what I know. I'm hungry. Yeah, my. Can we eat yet? <laughs> all right, guys, dig in. Uh -huh, great. It was nice of Indama and Sue to calm everybody down uh, for that uh, little thing there. Hey, what we saw Carl Edwards, and we're talking about who's fit. We had right long travel, a short practice time, and hot temperatures. What's it's, the effect? It's been a hectic week, but they're mainly worried about this track, Chris, that outside groove. Carl's starting on the outside, and he told me, I got to get to the bottom as quick as I can. When you try to get to the bottom in a hurry, sometimes you run into each other. Hot and slick temperatures uh, up in the 80s. Carl starting outside the top 20, along with guys like Matt Kenseth and Brad Kozlowski. Earnhardt Jr. and Jeff Gordon as well. And now for the most famous words in motorsports, please welcome your Grand Marshal, number 90 of the Detroit Lions, defensive tackle in Dominican Sioux. Phoenix! I can't hear you, Phoenix! Are you ready to have some fun? Let's go! Drivers, start your engines! Can Matt Kenseth make it two in a row? Can Jimmy Johnson bounce back to some of the questions that will be answered 312 miles away? We want to... Tomorrow. The Subway Fresh Fit 500 on Fox is sponsored by Subway Restaurants. Hurry in to Subway for the Jalapeno Tuna featured $5 footlong of March. Hi, I'm Indomitian Sioux. Subway is the official training restaurant of me and my fellow famous fan, Carl Edwards. Make Subway part of your training regimen too. Enjoy the great and well-trained drivers as they take part in the Subway Fresh Fit 500. Drivers anxious to get going here in Phoenix at the Subway Fresh Fit 500. And we're glad you're along for NASCAR on Fox, the second race of the season. Let's go back up to the play-by-play -play booth and welcome in once again, Daryl Waltrip, Larry McReynolds, Mike Joy. So Michael Waltrip and I will be enjoying the race from here in the Hollywood Hotel. And guys, I'm excited to sit here and watch the race with you and looking forward to a lot of fun, hot action, Mike. <laughs> Thanks, Chris, and uh, let me add our welcome back. Glad to have you with us. These four races starting today could be on tracks that couldn't be more different. One mile today, a mile and a half next week, a 5 8 mile cereal bowl, and then a two-mile super speedway. So, Daryl, if you're going to win this championship, you got to get your game on right now, right here. The most frustrating thing is a driver and a crew is to be really good at Daytona, get a great finish there, and then come to a track like this and struggle. If you're going to win the championship, you have to be consistent. You have to run good on every kind of racetrack because we go to so many different kinds of tracks, you better be able to figure it out and be, figure it out in a hurry if you want to win the championship. Yeah, and the reason it's a challenge from Daytona to Phoenix, you throw everything away that you learned there. This is a very short race. It's a fast pace. You're worried about having that car drive good. You're not worried about finding a buddy. You're not worried about bum drafting unless they're in your way. You want to ultimately achieve the same thing that Matt Kinson did in the Daytona 500, but the journey there can be totally different here at Phoenix. Let's have a look at the Geico starting grid for today's race in Phoenix. Mark Martin on the pole, his 52nd of his career. Tony Stewart, his best starting spot here. Regan Smith, fourth top 10 start in the last six races here. Jimmy Johnson, a bunch of top five finishes here. Juan Pablo's best start at Phoenix. Ryan Newman, top fives in the last four races here. Greg Biffle, best at Phoenix, second twice. Kevin Harvick, two-time Phoenix winner. Joey Logano and Casey Kane, the winner here last November. Jeff Burton, fourth here last November. And Kyle Busch, who won here in 2005. 
Denny Hamlin, top dozen in the last seven of eight here. Marcus Ambrose, eighth last November. A.J. Allmendinger, top tens both races here last year. Clint Boyer has a good record at Phoenix. Bobby Labonte and Eric Almirola got taken out in an accident in Daytona. Kurt Busch was leading here last fall, ran out of gas. Paul Menard, ninth here last November. Jamie McMurray trying for his second top 10 here in 17 starts with Landon Castle. Dave Blaney, who nearly won the 500 with Carl Edwards. And as you look at the rest of the starting lineup, Daryl, who are we going to talk to? Let's see if we can get Carl on the uh, on a headset here. Carl, it's a DW. You got a copy? Got gotcha, you, DW. Hey, buddy, uh, all we hear here at uh, Phoenix is about track position, track position. You're pretty far back. What's your plan to get up front? Well, our plan is to just have a really good subway for fusion here. Bob's going to make some good calls on the box. And he's going to try real hard to, you know, to be consistent all day. It's a big day for us and for subway. And I got to say that we're thinking about a, a couple people today. It's uh, young Dakota Williams and young Robbie Moore. Both of those guys aren't with us anymore, but we're thinking about their families. And hopefully we have a good day for, for Robbie and Dakota and, and everybody here. 10-4, Carl. Our thoughts and prayers are with them as well. And uh, what do you got to eat in the old, uh, subway car today? Well, see, that's the game here. They, they specifically have deprived me of food. They got a, a sweet onion chicken teriyaki sub waiting for me in the in the victory lane. So that's the motivation today. Well, as a car owner of mine used to say, go on up there and get it. 10-4, DW. Have a good one, bud. This race is brought to you by Budweiser, the beer that starts with full flavor and ends with a crisp, fast finish. Great times are waiting. Grab some buds. Ready to race in Phoenix. Late breaking stories from Pit Road. Matt Yoakum. Mike, it's an elbows up midsummer type day for Tony Stewart. He's hoping for a hot slick racetrack because 21 of 44 career wins have come during the summer months. He rolls off outside pole with a car that he finished third with here last fall. Steve Burns. Well, Matt, Jimmy Johnson said this is no time to hit the panic button. They actually had negative points after a disastrous Daytona 500. But if this is a place to get healthy, Jimmy Johnson will do it here. A four-time winner at Phoenix, Dick Bergeron. Steve, Ryan Newman is in a backup car, but it's a good one. He won with that car here two years ago. Newman starts sixth. Chris Devota. This race, nothing but confidence, right? Not for Jeff Gordon. He won the race a year ago, but in the fall, in his words stunk so bad keep your eye on the 24 they do not have this new configuration figured out jeff hammond where are you chris i'm up on top of rattlesnake hill and it's been said the potential danger lies under every rock well today the same can be said about the track below and each of its four turns to me the hot slick conditions are really going to challenge these teams to make the right adjustments at the right times and don't forget they put a roller coaster in the middle of the back straight away well that can lead to trouble also putting it simply this racetrack is strike from any place in a blink of an eye. I think Jeff's got the best view of anybody in the place up there atop Rattlesnake Hill outside turns three and four. It is a gorgeous day in Phoenix. Temp is headed into the 80s, the asphalt 105, a light breeze out of the northeast, warm and sunny. I like it hot. I like it slick. Boogity, boogity, boogity. second. You know what I like, DW? We just saw Tony Stewart in a 14 car make that pass up in that second group. We wasn't sure we were going to have that early. I believe we've got a second group of racing. I think I like that pass right there even better. Down low into one, got under Mark. Mark gave him room. Tony's off to the race. Oh, a big stack up as Mark Martin backs up in the middle of the field. They were three wide going into three. Boy, Mark's car looked like it got real loose going up uh, through the dog leg back there. You know, Jeff Hammond talked about it. I think the weather is such a huge issue. They have only qualified since they were on the track Friday. It's about 20 degrees hotter. This track has lost a ton of grip. Jimmy Johnson coming to the front in the 48. 
up to third spot. Greg Biffle right behind gave up the position. Who scraped the wall here on lap one? Like the nine car back there. Yeah, Marcus Ambrose. You know, Michael and I did that piece about double trouble down the back back there, but turn four has been a culprit here as well. Gets really tight on both these turns, two and four. Casey Kane and his new ride, the Farmers Insurance number five. Battling Mark Martin on the inside. Ryan Newman just behind them. You know, Mike, Larry, uh, Mark Martin in the 50. Is not someone that will challenge you real hard right now. You get a little nose under him, get a little position on him, he's going to give it to you. He's, he's really running very cautiously at this point. Montoya takes over fifth in the 42 from Kevin Harvick. We interviewed Juan a little earlier in the weekend, and you could almost hear the relief in his voice to get here and put that situation at Daytona with the jet dryer behind him. I see a lot of race cars, Larry, right now that already, already need some serious adjustments. This and one of them, this 48 car, Jimmy Johnson, I keep an eye on that guy. i tell you why. Casey Kane won this race, and when Casey Kane and Kenny Francis came to work at Hendrick Motorsports, I really think they helped this 48 team, particularly here at Phoenix, where they struggled last year. You know, we talk about the dog leg. And it, it, it's really changed when they reconfigured the track. It, it's almost taken the dog leg part out of that back straightaway. It's more like a big old sweeping turn from two all the way down to three. It is. It's kind of like a big arc. Yeah. Uh, got about 100 suggestions last night on Twitter what to call it since it's no longer a dog leg. And uh, we'll share some of them with you later on. Steve? Mike, an update on Mark Martin in the 55, the pole center. He is perfectly fine. He just told his crew. been talking about it all weekend. They start the air pressure down in these tires because they know how much pressure they're going to build over a long run, and that will make a driver feel loose. Yeah, and, and of course, these tires don't have interliners in them like we do at some of the super speedways, and so that even makes the tires even feel like more of a big bowl of jelly when the pressure is low. Well, so why do you start them so low then? Well, you start them low because we're going to get a, a tremendous amount of buildup from the heat. And you see here, Casey Kane in the five working on Mark Martin in the 55. I think to support what we're talking about, we're looking at our scoring monitor. We're here on lap nine, and every lap keeps getting quicker. It's because the air pressure is coming up in these tires. Now, eventually, it's going to cross the fence, and you'll start to lose grip because of laps on the tires and too much air pressure. And eventually, being in about a lap or two, Jimmy Johnson is going to catch Tony Stewart for the lead. So, Larry, if you leave Daytona, you got negative points coming to the next race. What is your mission? Go up there and lead this thing and go to victory lane. And get all the points you can. A new view from Clint Boyer's front bumper as he runs in 16. The Subway Fresh Fit 500 on Fox is sponsored by Sprint, proud sponsor of the NASCAR Sprint Cup Series, by Ford, proud sponsor of NASCAR, by Lowe's, Lowe's never stop improving, and by Subway restaurants. Get to Subway Pronto for their fresh takes on Italian. Subway, eat fresh. Welcome back to Phoenix 16 laps in there's the reason for the first caution of the day Jimmy Johnson had taken the lead from Tony Stewart and in the back straightaway Clint Boyer had cut down a tire on his number 15 Toyota so pit road is open for the first caution period of the day Matt and Tony Stewart making his way down pit road his car he said was very good on entry even better on exit but a little bit tight across the center they're going to make an air pressure change and go left side tires on this stop Steve. Matt, we expect Jimmy Johnson to take just left side tires in that number 48 car, left sides only. Larry, a little bit of strategy here. Well, the reason they're changing left side tires only, Chad Canals, Jimmy Johnson's crew chief, told me we're seeing a lot more left side wear than we are on the right side. This is a very hard tire. Doesn't have a lot of grip. Mark Martin took no tires. He's the first one off pit road. 
Nation in Phoenix. This is a bizarre twist to this day. The Subway Fresh Fit 500 on Fox is sponsored by Budweiser. Great times are waiting. Grab some buns. First caution of the day for Clint Boyer. Ten drivers stayed out. One of those, Robbie Gordon, just pitted. So that leaves without having made pit stops. Kevin Harvick, Casey Kane, Regan Smith, Jeff Burton, Denny Hamlin, and Kyle Busch, along with Brad Keselowski, Matt Kenseth, and Jeff Gordon. Ready to go green to complete lap 20 of 312. Still on the lead lap, one car off track. Michael McDowell, the Glendale, Arizona native, is taking his car to the garage. It really wasn't surprised to see those top 10 or so drivers Whoa. stay out. Casey Kane just smacked the heck out of the fence coming off turn four. The number five of Kane expected to contend today, and now the pack will work its way past him. We are still green. As Kane tries to get to the bottom of the racetrack. I, I know I gave you a couple of woes there, but he, he lost it, then he caught it, and then it shot right out in the fence. Did a lot of damage. Kane was the second place car. He now drops to 42nd and will come to pit road. There's Casey Kane. I watch him, Mike, Larry. He comes up off the corner. The car gets loose right there. Almost spun it. That was my first bull, and then that was my second one. And he's lucky he didn't get run over from the rear, but that did a lot of damage to that race car. And he's on pit road. He actually hit that pretty hard with that right front, especially our winner from the November race. I'd say that's got garage written all over it. Kane has come to pit road for service. He'll lose a lap or more as we continue under green. As we go back and think about the cut tire on Clint Boyer's car, the 15, uh, low air pressure, particularly in that right front. If you get it too low, it'll tear that tire up. Steve? Mike, a lot of people in the garage thought this could be a winning race car. Kenny Francis, the crew chief, saying get all the sheet metal off of the right side tires. You see them banging out the sheet metal over the what would be the right front tire with a lot Steve? of damage. He's in he, trouble for the second time. He's cut down another right front. When you cut tires down that often and that close together, that's normally something rubbing the inside of the tire pocket. Yeah, it could be a sway bar arm. That happens a lot. That arm sets real close to the inside of the tire. It could be a brake duct, but something's cutting that tire down. Now, Boyer gets down to the apron without incident, so we continue under green. And two of the early favorites in this race, Casey. Kane and Clint Boyer laps down with cut tires. Off in the distance, here comes Boyer. Second red car. And there it goes. I mean, that's just a cut down tire. Didn't hit the wall very hard, but it did do pretty significant damage. And Darrell, when that right front tire's down, that steering wheel's useless. It won't do nothing, go straight. Inside, 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 inside. You heard the tire go down. Sudden air loss is Goodyear's turn. Dick Bergman? Well, it's possible, Mike, that the splitter, which was damaged in that early flat tire, did the deed here. It was sort of dragging underneath the car, and the crew did not get an opportunity to fix it. But uh, two flat right fronts, one after another for Cliff Boyer. Boyer and Kane are both on pit road. Two drivers who are both with new teams this year. Two drivers who both have tremendous dirt track experience and were expected to contend here. Steve? Casey Kane just radioed and said something is broken in this suspension. Kenny Francis thinks it's a sway bar arm on the right front. Now he's saying upper control arm and the lower control arm is bent as well. Mechanics got the hood up now. Steve, yeah. not surprised as hard as he hit that wall. And, and I, I looked at the car coming down pit road, Larry, and the right front is tilted all the way in almost to the engine. And so Kevin Harvick, who led 107 laps in the Saturday race here, is out in front. 
Now have a look at Dale Jr. here. He's got some damage to the left front corner. Yeah, you can see the damage on the fender right there, Mike. And he's gotten into somebody and buckled that fender and has pushed it down on top of the tire. Of the cars that made pit stops, Jimmy Johnson restarted 14th. Man, he's fast. Dale Jr.'s teammate from 14th to 6th since the restart. So to set it for you, it's Harvick at the front, Regan Smith in second, Denny Hamlin third, Kyle Busch in fourth. Two Chevys and two Toyotas. The best Ford in the race is Matt Kenseth, and the best Dodge Charger in the race right now is Brad Keselowski in eighth, followed by A.J. Allmendinger, 15th, and Robbie Gordon. The fastest car at the running the fastest lap times right now is Jimmy Johnson in the 48 car. He is putting down some tremendously fast laps. He's gained eight positions since the restart. We continue under green, just one brief caution flag for Clint Boyer, but the wall has taken its toll in Phoenix as Casey Kane takes the Farmers Insurance Chevy to the garage. Kevin Harvick leading Regan Smith. Let's take an inside look at what's happening in the NASCAR Sprint Cup Series brought to you by Sprint. We'll look at the fastest lap time and the lap leaders. Get unlimited access to the NASCAR Sprint Cup Series with live in-car audio and real-time stats. Only on the Sprint Network, the only national carrier with truly unlimited data. Learn more at Sprint.com slash speed. Kevin Harvick's now led 22 laps. Tony Stewart led nine, Jimmy Johnson six, and Mark Martin won. Kevin Harvick dominated the race here yesterday, but didn't win it. So sitting out there leading a lot of laps makes you feel good. Got to capitalize on it. Regan Smith, 1.8 back in second. Danny Hamlin, two and a half back in third. This guy right here, all weekend long out at Daytona, ever race. Regan Smith, 78 car, first row, always up front. And here he is, he qualified good, running up front again today. And but why is that surprising? It's a single car team. It doesn't race out of the greater Charlotte area. Regan Smith is not one of the big established big stars of this sport, but soon he might be. They're in Denver, Colorado. On it. Third place, Jimmy Johnson has caught Denny Hamlin. Remember, Johnson restarted 14th and has worked his way quickly through the field. Well, I think that goes to show you how good of a race car Jimmy Johnson has. We know he was one of the drivers that came to pit road on that last caution. No one else has been able to make a lot of moves except Jimmy Johnson back up toward the front. And you know, Michael and I were showing you the, the dog leg back there on the back straightaway and how that could lead to some trouble. But here's Jeff Gordon in a 24 car going about around Brad Kaslowski. See how he dropped to the apron, cut the dog leg, took the shortcut, got the position, and was able to make the pass. That's a nice, clean way to use the apron. And unlike Daytona and Talladega, which are marked by a double yellow line at the inside of the track, there is no out of bounds here at Phoenix and at the other Sprint Cup tracks. Here is Jeff Gordon at eighth place. Krista. Mike, Jeff Gordon started this race saying he was ungodly loose going into turn one, but they needed track position because of his poor qualifying effort, so they stayed out. Jeff came on the radio a few laps ago and said, boys, it's starting to turn now. And we saw that yesterday in some of the races here. Sometimes some guys stayed out on old tires after a caution. Some guys came in, got left side, some got right side, some got four. This tire, my experience with Goodyear and their tire testing, when you go to a new track like we had here last fall, the right side tires are always real conservative, pretty hard. It's the left sides that take the beating. That's where they get the grip from, out of the left sides. Left side tires won the race yesterday. Probably going to be the factor again today. All right, let's catch up with our Daytona 500 winner, Matt Kenzen. Uh, who has climbed from 26 up to 7th, Krista. Well, Mike, in a similar situation as Jeff Gordon, they had to start the car loose because they know this track is going to tighten up. Matt said what he learned about this new configuration in the fall. He said, I like this track with the back stretches, and this was his word of choice. Weird. Well, and we have to remember he was one of those 10 drivers that stayed out, 
This is a backup car. Matt Kenseth crashed early in that second practice on Friday. They had to unload this car. They did get a few laps, but he didn't get the qualifying run he was looking for. Turn four, you know, it, oh, it never fails. Michael and I did that piece on the back straightaway and how that's where you want to watch. But uh, just turn four here, traditionally under any configuration, has been the trouble spot. And, and watch what happened off turn four the last time around with Greg Biffle and Joy Logano in the 20 car down underneath him. Makes some contact, gets Biffle a little bit loose, makes the pass. It's almost like Joy Logano's 20 car, it just, it just wasn't wanting to turn right there. He was probably turning the wheel, but it was just sliding up the track. Bit of an arrow push, I'd say. And Jimmy Johnson used that arc in the back straightaway, the former dog leg, to make the pass on Regan Smith and move up to second. Let's show it to you. <laughs> there he goes down on the, takes the shortcut. But right there is where Regan Smith in the 78 spotter probably said, the 48 is under you looking inside. And Regan was smart, gave Jimmy Johnson in the 48 the room. Jimmy Johnson has finished in the top five in 10 of his last 11 races at Phoenix, all except last November. Kevin Harvick leading Jimmy Johnson by a second and a half. Regan Smith two and a half back. Harvick in control right now. The Subway Fresh Fit 500 is sponsored by Dodge. Visit your local Dodge dealer today by AT&T, the nation's largest 4G network. AT&T, rethink possible. By GoDaddy.com, domains, websites, and everything in between. And by DirecTV. If you call yourself a sports fan, you got to get DirecTV. 55 laps complete in the Subway Fresh Fit 500. At Phoenix, Kevin Harvick leading Jimmy Johnson, Regan Smith, Denny Hamlin, and Kyle Busch. Clint Boyer back on track, but Casey Kane, one of six cars in the garage. And Larry, of the top ten, eight of these drivers did not stop under the caution for Clint Boyer. They're going to need to be in pit road pretty soon. Yeah, Mike, the fuel window here at Phoenix is about 78 to 84 laps, so we're probably looking about 20 to 25 laps. Drivers like Kevin Harvick will have to make a green flag stop. All the other drivers, including Jimmy Johnson in the 48, they'll be able to go about 15, 16 laps further than that. But if we get green flag pit stops, the spotters on the roof are going to be busy. And here at Phoenix, they have a unique viewpoint, which is shared by Jeff Hammond. Yeah, Mike, I've relocated here to the top of the spotter stand. A little different than on the week at Daytona when the starter spotter stand was located right at the start finish line. We're down at right about the middle of one and two, and the biggest challenge for these guys is the fact that you exit off the late part of turn four to just about the start finish line. you got to be careful. He's trying to tell your driver when he can clear in. A lot of times they got a better view on it, but from up here right now, it is a challenge. Just like this racetrack, these guys have had to adapt. But somebody make the right call here today. They may want to be in the winning with you. One other thing, up here, I can really see how that 48 car guys is rolling the center of this corner and gaining on the 29. Yeah, the 29 car's lead is a NFL. Not for long. <laughs> oh. Steve? Mike, Jimmy Johnson reporting to his team that his car is really good through the and caution's out. Debris, turn three. Now that's the reason for the second caution of the day. It comes out working lap number 60 here in Phoenix. And that's that caution, the timing of it's perfect for those drivers we just talked about because for the most part now, everyone is on equal ground. Everyone's going to have to come to pit road. I think we'll still see a mixed bag of strategy, but I think every driver will be on pit road. Well, I think, Larry, the 48 took four tires on his pit stop, and we saw how fast he was. Phoenix native J.J. Yaley will get the free pass. He was the first car one lap down. And here they come to pit road. Krista. Kevin Harvick telling his crew chief, Shane Wilson, I need it to turn better, but whatever you do, do not take away my grip. Dick. Regan Smith is going to have to pit as well. He's got the condition of loose in one part of the racetrack, tight in another, Matt. And Denny Hamlin telling his new crew chief, Darian Grubb, he has to wait way too long to get back in the gas, especially on exit of turn four. It's cost him too much time. Track bar adjustment, Steve. 
Chad Canals reminding Jimmy Johnson not to stop deep in his box. Better stop this time. Saying he's just getting a little bit tight in the center at both ends of the racetrack. Earl Barvin, the spotter, reminding him to take care of his brakes. Four tires for Jimmy Johnson. Yeah, Darren, when you've got as good a car as Jimmy Johnson has, you may have to do something late in the race, but I'm give me four tires every time. <laughs> wow, look That's at Gamble. The history of that 48 car. The gamble by Kurt Busch. He takes on just two tires and gains 16 positions to second. Ready for the restart in Phoenix. Ford F-150 EcoBoost track facts. Ford has 13 wins here in the desert. Roush Fenway got their 300th NASCAR win across NASCAR's top three series in the Daytona 500. And the last Phoenix Sprint Cup races have been won by different drivers, six in a row. And the last four broke huge winless streaks for four different drivers. Clint Boyer gets the wave around, so does Josh Wise. Boyer gets one of his five laps down back. Casey Kane is back in the race. Jimmy Johnson, Kurt Busch will lead them down to the restart green behind the Dodge Charger Police Pursuit Safety Car. We're going to go racing. We're going to crank it up for you on Fox. Tracked it off turn four to try to hold that lead from Jimmy Johnson. Yeah, I think Jimmy kind of said, let Kurt get in front of him in the 51 because he knows he's got a little bit better car and he's got better tires. He's just setting him up. Johnson makes his move to the inside for the lead. And the all time lap leader at Phoenix, 877 and counting. Jimmy Johnson out front. Matt and Kurt Busch on their first run, Mike, just the opposite of the last one. The first run, the car was really tight in the center. They made some big adjustments, took four tires. The second stop, they just took laps. The car was loose, but this team really trying to build on something after a very difficult and struggling speed weeks in Daytona. But you learned something right there, Mike, Larry. I mean, a 51 car, what if that had been a green-white check? Could have been a, could have been a different deal. Kurt Busch slip sliding around. Here comes Matt Kenseth and younger brother Kyle Busch in the 18. Kyle Busch to third, or second rather, behind Johnson. Kenseth battling Kurt Busch for third. That last set of pit stop, Matt Kenseth's crew were riding with Matt right now. They had a well of a pit stop, which doesn't come as no surprise. in the 48 and Kyle Busch in the 18 ran almost identical lap times. <laughs> 70 complete this time by in the garage. Michael McDowell, Scott Briggs, Robbie Gordon, Landon Castle who got tipped into the wall by David Rudiman. Cars laps down. Casey Kane minus 37. Joe Nemechek, Clint Boyer. See Denny Hamlin in the 11 there. Now he's under fire right now from Kevin Harvick in that 29. Daryl talked about information being transferred. This was the last pit stop though. Watch the rear tire changer, but look, he never quit digging. And if you'll watch, the left side tires came off at the same time. 
But Carol, you talked about information being transferred from one organization to another. Think back to Darian Grubb, who was Tony Stewart's crew chief that ran so well here. Now he's with Denny Hamlin. They only lost nine tenths of a second on that stop. Because you can see the time spent on pit road, the, what the driver did was identical. And Mark Martin was the quickest off pit road that time. So despite the uh, air hose getting wrapped up with the man making the or track bar adjustment, very little loss of time. Pick. Next week back in the desert, but we're in Las Vegas on the mile and a half of the Cobalt Tools 400 on Fox. Pickers have a tendency to kind of step it up a notch if you're running good. Mark's team. You know, he's on the pole. He's running good. They know he got a chance to win today. That's that's big motivation for a pit crew. Kevin Harvick grabs the spot from Kurt Busch. And moves back into the top five. Two Chevys, two Toyotas, and a Ford in the top five after 74 laps in Phoenix. The Subway Fresh Fit 500 on Fox is sponsored by Subway. Subway broke the 200 calorie breakfast barrier with egg white morning melts. Subway, eat fresh. Already seven different leaders here in Phoenix in time for an AT&T race break brought to you by the nation's largest 4G network, Rethink Possible. Jimmy Johnson leads Kyle Busch and Matt Kenseth. Remember, Jimmy started negative 23 after Daytona, has the fastest lap so far. He's led more than anyone else, but problems for Clint Boyer, Mike. Yeah, I talked to the team and said it looked like the first time they just cut a tire. No real reason why that happened. Watch Casey Kane here. Gets all the way sideways, overcorrects, boom, into the outside wall. A result from Boyer's first cut tire, he cuts another one. Some of the damage done in the first wreck caused him to, or the first black tire caused him to have to come back to the road again. Casey Kane in the garage and back out as we talk about Jimmy Johnson, who during testing, a test session last year, the designer of the track casually talking with Jimmy about the backstretch, and the, the designer said to Jimmy, you're not driving it right, and Jimmy <laughs> just kind of smiled. He's won here four times, and obviously a very important race given what happened in Daytona, and he is ahead of the pack right now. Yeah, Daytona was a disaster for this whole team, a crash early in the race, the penalty, obviously. He came to Phoenix on a mission. I guarantee he said, I got to put that behind me go win the race he's the only driver on the track that's run down into the 26 second bracket he's got a couple of tenths on the field Chris I need to make some adjustments if I want to catch him this is a cat that's been running well too you heard Daryl talk about a great pit stop by the crew it fires up the driver when the crew does their job they were the fastest off pit road last time Mark's driven up to the eighth spot so solid effort for the young man there so far <laughs> at age 53 not the oldest pole sitter though that was Harry Again at 54, but in now the 32nd race here at Phoenix, only four times has the pole sitter gone on to win this race. A check of AT&T's fastest driver challenge. Remember to text FAST to 34763 to play or visit at and FastestDriver.com for a chance to win AT&T's fastest driver challenge. We think possible and as we rejoin Daryl Larry and Mike you know Mike Kyle Busch uh, in, in two of the last four races here led with 10 laps to go but failed to win he's certainly the one guy keeping the heat on Jimmy so far thanks Chris he's sure to be a contender he runs three and a half seconds behind the race leader as we cross through 84 laps complete and, and Michael mentioned the 48 car and, and overcoming that debacle they had at Daytona I know the DNA of that team and that team was one that will come back with a vengeance and they will show you that we may be negative points today but we won't be tomorrow Johnson finished 42nd but before the car even got on the track Chad Knauss who you see on the right and car chief Ron Malik were docked by NASCAR they were found to have had the C pillars, the rear windshield, the rear window posts on the car, not in compliance with NASCAR spec. And when penalties were handed down, six race suspension, $100,000, and 25 championship points. Hendrick Motorsports has appealed. And until the appeal is heard, which could be next week or the week after, perhaps, they are allowed to remain at the racetrack working on the car until the three-man appeals board renders its decision. 
and, and if they uphold the decision, if the appeal board upholds it, you're looking at Chad Knauss there on the right, that'd be like a, a, a football or baseball team losing their head coach and their assistant head coach for six weeks. And at the opposite end of the of the spectrum is the trouble 48 had at Daytona, but Dale Jr. in the 88 car, he had a great Daytona, but not today. His car is wrecking loose. He says it's chatter in the right rear, and he is falling back. He's in 26th spot and doesn't like his car. Krista, he made an extra pit stop under that last caution and fell from 24th to 31st. Yes, he did, Mike. The reason why the team needed to pull the fender from a tire rub when Junior came down pit lane that extra time, he told crew chief Steve Letarte, I don't remember hitting anyone. The team told him, well, Eric Almirola slid up into you early in the race. They took advantage of the extra stop by putting extra Sunoco fuel in the car. So what's going on with Dale Jr. right now? What did you say? I'm half concerned coming back in and beating on that fender a little more. It was rubbing harder than I thought. What fender is hitting? I ain't hit nobody. The left front, the left front is rubbing. Stupid to cut a tire with that many guys behind us. Come on in right here. Well, we've already seen what a cut tire can do to you. Just the same thing it did to Clint Boyer, uh, not once but twice in that 15 car. Junior has rebounded to 26, 19. 15 seconds behind his Hendrick teammate Jimmy Johnson, who leads Kyle Busch still by the same three and a half seconds. The Subway Fresh Fit 500 is sponsored by Farmers. We are insurance. We are farmers. By Lowe's. Lowe's never stop improving. And by Chevrolet and their award-winning cars, trucks, and crossovers. And are now for a chance to win the Camaro Synergy and a Talladega Race Weekend package and meet Tony Stewart. Visit WinCamaroSynergy.com to enter. 97 laps complete. Kyle Busch has cut down Jimmy Johnson's margin from 3.5 now to 2.8 seconds. First to second, Matt. Mike, a big help in reeling in the 48 comes from his spotter, Tony Hurst. Jr. Earlier, Kyle asked Tony to do some comparison about where he was running to the 48th line. Off of segment time. Try to give me three and four versus one and two with the leader. I think he's killing me down here. I, th I think what I'm seeing is the only way they're going to catch that 48 car is if that yellow line that he stuck to happens to get disappear because he is eating that yellow line up on both ends of the track and that's something that Kyle in the, in the 18 is not able to do. He seems to shove up a little bit center off. But Jeff Hammond was up on the spotter stand a while ago. That's just another role that the spotter can play, especially the place like this is giving the driver information about where the driver that's leading the race is actually running on the track. Kyle Busch in second, Matt Kenseth the first forward in the race. In third, 4.8 seconds back. Then Denny Ham, Kevin Harvick, Tony Stewart, Mark Martin, Kurt Busch, and Brad Keselowski in ninth. Now Keselowski drives a Dodge for Roger Penske, the captain, who has won championships in Trans Am, in Can Am, in IndyCar, in Kart, and virtually everywhere he's raced except the Sprint Cup Series. So change is going to come in the Penske cap. Uh, when Jeff Hammond was up on the spotter's perch, he had a chat with Roger Penske. Well, we caught up with Roger Penske, and Mr. Penske, this week you made a big announcement about a change your team's getting ready to get do. You're going to be going from Dodge to Ford. Well, Jeff, you know, it's uh, one of those things that uh, was a big uh, decision for us as a team, obviously. Uh, we've had a great run with Dodge, with SRT. The opportunity, though, to team with Ford and Ford One to benchmark ourselves in the future and have the opportunity to work with the Roush Fenway team, which is a world class team, gives us a great opportunity at 13. We haven't won this championship, so you got to keep changing until you get there. Well, and, the, and Roger said it right there. I, I think that makes a huge statement. He has been had drivers in this circuit since 1972. Full time starting in 1991 with Rusty Wallace. He's won 70 run races. He's won the Daytona 500, Daryl, but still has not won a Sprint Cup Series championship. They're like, they're out on an island by themselves. It, it, they're basically two cars, Roger Penske's two cars. 
Dodge doesn't have any other teams for the to share information with like the other manufacturers do. Now Penske ran for it from 1994 to 2002. Uh, his first driver in the Sprint Cup Series, Mark Donahue. They did get a win with American Motors on the road course, but uh, have, have run with virtually all the different manufacturers uh, in the time since. And there was a time when I thought maybe being out there on that island by yourself was an advantage, but I think it's caught up with them. They just don't have the resources of teammates and other teams. Now Dodge will continue as we look at race leader Jimmy Johnson and Chevrolet. Next week at Las Vegas, Dodge will introduce their 2013 Sprint Cup Dodge Charger. The photos I've seen, it looks just like the street car. It's going to be a, going to be quite a look. The gap now 3.4 Jimmy Johnson stretching it out on Kyle Busch as Kyle works uh, a little bit of race traffic moving past Mike Bliss trying to there in the 32 and Matt Kenseth remains just about five seconds back in third and it's a big that's a backup car. I mean they had to get a backup car off the 17 did but it didn't slow them down one bit. They qualified pretty well and here they are racing right at the front. Denny Hamlin in 11 cars started back in the 13th position. Been right up there in the top five for a number of laps, running fourth right now. And that, that, that's Hamlin is a, off to a pretty solid start. Got a fourth place finish last Monday night at Daytona. Team looks like it's really gelling good. He and Darian Grubb, they're really working well together. And Hamlin has got a really good attitude right now about this season. Kevin Harvick, six and a half back, and Tony Stewart, eight and a half seconds back. Stewart running in sixth. He started from the outside pole today. And at 107 laps, Mark Martin, the pole sitter, in seventh place. Steve, 10 seconds off the lead. Mike, when he stopped on lap number 60 with a caution flew, Mark's comment was, I need more front grip in this race car. To affect that change, they took some air out of the right front tire, and he's been able to make up a few positions, as you said, running seventh. And, and it, it's sort of a balancing act. You would like to run some tape on the grill, on the nose of the car, to plant that nose and get that front end to turn better, but you can't. It's too hot. So you got to take all the tape off the grill, off the brake ducts, got to have all the air going into the car that you can. That's conducive to aero push. Pretty impressed with Kurt Busch. Yeah, he lost some positions when he changed just two tires versus four tires, but he has settled into the top ten in eight. Brad Keselowski, first dodge in the race of ninth and won Paula Montoya. Coming off that bizarre accident at Daytona under caution in 10th with Jeff Gordon breathing down his neck. 109 laps complete as Jimmy Johnson pads his all time lap lead at Phoenix. All your questions will be answered right here on Fox. 112 laps complete in the Subway Fresh Fit 500. Kyle Busch wins the race off pit road under caution. Casey Mears and the Geico number 13 running 27th. Last car on the lead lap is OK. After a big hit with the turn one wall, look at him just in front of the onboard camera on Casey Kane's number. We five. actually are racing Landon Castle in the 83, though. He's on our lap. That's up here. Stay low, stay low. Come on. Mike, that had the appearance of too much rear brake. Got down in the corner, got on the brakes, locked up the rear maybe a little bit. And Daryl, that's what a driver will go to. He has his two systems front and rear. If maybe the car is not turning under braking, he can put a little bit of rear brake into it. Yeah, and if you're having a brake problem, you can dial a little to the rear, try to help that. Look like it may, may have too much. That's just how it looked. Casey is okay. But the Geico Ford will be hauled back to the garage. That brakes is freaking went to the floor. Major damage. You go to the garage, guys. You say the brake pedal went to the floor? Yeah, that's Ooh. what he. he, he I, I'm, it's looked like he was having brake trouble. And when you are, you'll start to dial some rear end to take some heat off the fronts. And it looked like it locked up the rears. The speeds you run here that you carry off in the corner, you use a tremendous amount of break into these fairly flat corners. Third caution flag of the day. There is Dave Blaney. He gets our Aaron's lucky dog. 
and we'll be back on the lead lap when we go back to green. You don't need credit. All you need is errands. Let's catch up on the pit stops beginning with Steve. Mike 48 car takes four tires, a small chassis adjustment. They raised the panard bar on the right rear of that number 48 car. Jimmy saying the car was just a little bit snug. Chad Canals looked at the tires that came off the car and said they look great. Matt Yoakum. Steve crew chief Dave Rogers stopwatch told him that Kyle Busch was getting beat by the 48 of Jimmy Johnson down in turns three and four. Now they went for two tires on this stop, left side tires for the 18. He says he's right on the fence of one way or the other being too, too too, too tight or too free. Krista? The Daytona 500 champion said his car was getting more free as the run went on, but he said he needed some turnability in the center and needed the front end to stick. If you're crew chief Jimmy Fennick, how do you make that happen? With air pressure. Also, four tire change for Matt Kenseth. Dick? Well, Carl Edwards started in the 24th position. You might have thought he was going to do a whole lot better than that since he finished second here on this newly reconfigured track last fall. But he has run in the 20s all day long. They're trying to get the chassis to where the car is going to behave the way Edwards wanted it. They did make an adjustment and took four tires on the last stop. Thanks, Dick. That catches you up on pit stops. But for Ryan Newman, who started sixth in a backup car after a practice crash, NASCAR has said that Newman's crew removed equipment from the pit box. He was running 12th. He'll restart tail end. That's one of the risks you run when you change just two tires because the, the pit crew gets done so quickly. If they're making a chassis adjustment, a lot of times they'll leave one of those wrenches stuck down in the back window. I believe I like the strategy of Kyle Busch in the 18 car. Left side tires. That won the race yesterday. It won a race here last fall uh, in, a, in the uh, Saturday race. So. I, this is going to be an interesting experiment for the 18. Let's take an inside look at what's happening in the NASCAR Sprint Cup Series brought to you by Sprint. You'll look at most laps led and the biggest mover in today's race. Get unlimited access to the NASCAR Sprint Cup Series with live in-car audio and real-time stats only on the Sprint Network. The only national carrier with truly unlimited data. Learn more at Sprint.com slash speed. Dave Blaney got the free pass. He'll be the 27th car on the lead lap as we go back to green. 115 of 312 complete. 116 this time by. One to go. We go back to green. Kyle Busch first on the list of our Toyota top performers. Full sitter Mark Martin fifth. Denny Hamlin seventh. And Joey Logano 11th. Martin Truex 13th. It's going to be a fun restart right here. Uh, got some good fast cars there to challenge Jimmy Johnson. See how this works out. Now Kevin Harvick in that 29 car, his team elected to change just left side tires as well, just like Kyle Busch's crew. They learned that yesterday. That was a winning secret yesterday. We'll see how it works out today. These cars got a whole lot more power than the cars yesterday did. Casey Mears car headed for the hauler. As we get ready to go green, and we'll crank it up for you on this restart. Side by side for third, Kozlowski on the outside of Johnson, then Kenseth battling Mark Martin. Well, there were some bold moves made on that back straightaway right after that restart. Yeah, that's that's when that's when the trouble spot over there. It
Larry, it's when you're in traffic and these guys get all bottled up. You don't have any, look, they're three wide right here. What am I going to do? What am I going to do? I'm going down here where there isn't anybody. It looks weird. And uh, I'm not so sure it's a good idea to do that, but they do make nice passes when they can get back up in front of people. Well, on the restart, Daryl, are you up to full speed by the time you're middle of the backstretch first time by? You may not, the guys in front of you may not be, but you may have such a head of steam that you gotta have somewhere to go with it. Talked about Brad Keselowski a little earlier in that two car. Brad started back in the 28th position. And he's up there battling Kevin Harvick in the 29 for second. Got caught in that late race accident at Daytona. That was his first did not finish race in 75 races. Larry, I think we're seeing exactly what we saw yesterday in that race. Those left side tires. Yeah, run, the 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 run those rights to death. You can put those lefts on there and pick up a lot of speed. Yeah, the rights aren't wearing, but the left sides are, which is backwards from what we normally have at an oval track. Jeff Gordon in the midst of it there. Let's check with Krista. Remember at the start of the race, Mike, when I said Jeff Gordon and the 24 team have been shaking their heads about this new track configuration? Well, Gordon has made up ground on the track, but he was frustrated recently with the 42 of Juan Pablo Montoya. Here is some radio chatter from the 24 team. We'll ask that fodder if this is really how we want to do this. I'm standing next to him right now. No, but because he's have to be defensive, the guys behind him has to be. Yeah, simple. I'm talking to him, but you can't think stupid. <laughs> you got to love them spotters. They tell it like it is, buddy. <laughs> At least in their world. Joe Gibbs racing teammates, Denny Hamlin, Joey Logano race for eight. Joey Logano on that 20 had a good run at Daytona. On a top 10 finish. Joey knows he's got to keep having performances like that and like this. This is a contract year for Joey Logano. Matt. Mike, great opportunity for Denny Hamlin and Darian Grove just to gel because Denny told me this is the first real race where handling is important. And he told me the biggest surprise about Darian, just he's so quiet on the radio. Meanwhile, they're trying to get that race car a lot better. He says it was just too free on takeoff for the first two to four laps, and then it went tight quickly on exit. And you know what they're going to have to do, you talked about Darian Grubb, the championship crew chief from, from last year. They're going to have to possibly weigh out different air pressure and then make other adjustments to the car to compensate for it. Darian is real methodical. He's not going to, he's, he's thinking a lot. He's always thinking about what they want to do. He doesn't talk a lot though on the radio. Still there, clear, clear. Carl Edwards makes the pass on Regan Smith. And look at Brad Keselowski. He and the 29 of Kevin Harvick just ran their fastest laps of this race here at lap 126. Joy Logano on that 20 car did as well. Well, Larry, I think uh, I, uh, fast forward here a little bit. It's, we're nowhere near the end of the race yet, but I think we know what people will probably try on that last green flag stop or caution flag stop near the end of the race. Tire, tire wise. Always gathering data. <laughs> That's right. Kyle Busch leading Kevin Harvick by 1.8 seconds. Jimmy Johnson 2.7 off the lead. Keslowski on his bumper and Mark Martin three seconds back of first place. Up now. The Subway Fresh Fit 500 on Fox is sponsored by Sprint, proud sponsor of the NASCAR Sprint Cup Series. We're under caution for the fourth time today. Coming out of turn number four, A.J. Allmendinger's number 22 Dodge gets a little loose. Paul Menard slams into him, and Jamie McMurray is also involved. Have a look. Mike, I was watching that 22 car. He was struggling. He had a, he was really falling back, or at least he was having a hard time keeping up. And he probably got up out of the gas a little bit. And Menard in the 27 nerfed him. Gets a little bit loose. You can see him fighting the wheel right there. Broke his momentum just enough. Menard got him. And what really knocked the deck lid off of A.J. Almer's 22 car was actually when he hit the wall on the outside. 
knocked spoiler deck lid and all off. They were battling for 15th place. Let's go to the leader's pit, Steve. Mike, I can't tell you what a huge break this caution flag is for Jimmy Johnson. He had just reported a vibration. He said he is a thousand percent convinced he has a loose wheel. They were just about to pit when the caution came out. And we'll take this opportunity to change four tires. Wow. Yeah, he was coming in next time by when that caution came out. And there's the damage to McMurray's Chevrolet. Collateral damage as Almendinger and Menard got together. There's Paul Menard trying to limp around for repairs. Yeah, we had about 14 drivers stay out. Not surprised, we'd only run 15 laps. Last, just we think it's going to the Subway Fresh Fit 500 on Fox is sponsored by Toyota. Under caution in Phoenix, 137 laps complete out of 312. And this is the third pit stop under this caution for Jimmy Johnson to work on the right rear. And I believe they probably have some luck stud issues what the lug nuts go on and probably what they may do is is add a little bit of wheel spacer on there just to take care of where maybe those threads on the lug stud are having an issue. Chad looks pretty confident he didn't look like he was all that worried uh, and it is a that is a pretty easy fix if that's the problem. No we've got at least two more pit stops to make for sure. Johnson remains on the lead lap currently posted 25th. Jamie McMurray crash damage to the right front. He also continues on the lead lap, and so does the other car involved. Uh, A.J. Allmendinger looks like a little more serious work being done on Paul Menard's car. Let's stop in at the University of Farmers. Jeff Hammond. Mike, we said it in the pre-race. You've got to manage your brakes when it comes to this racetrack. It's just like a short track. If you don't take care of them, they won't take care of you. From on board Casey Kane's car, you see the 13 car back in, come around, go up into the outside wall, and just basically just hammer that outside wall. All because the brakes went away. Right over my shoulder, you can see what's left of this race car when the brakes don't work here. And guys, we're just reaching halfway. You've got to manage your brakes all race long. Certainly 2012 not starting off for Casey Mears like he'd like to see it. Made the swap over to Ford during the off season. They had the fuel pressure issue last week and now this. One to go. Out of the race, Josh Wise, Casey Mears, Joe Nemechek, Robbie Gordon, Scott Riggs, and Michael McDowell. Hey, Larry Mack, you talked about putting a wheel spacer on the right rear of Jimmy Johnson's car. Could that possibly cause him some issues in post-race tech? You just think about moving the tread width around and changing the way that body is configured over the tires. We work in awful tight tolerances. Could that be an issue? Well, you certainly, they, it could be too wide, Michael, but, but I truly believe uh, and, and I know this 48 team and Jimmy Johnson are certainly under a microscope right now because of what happened at Daytona. But I think possibly NASCAR, if indeed they were too wide on the rear, which I would say if they were, it's only going to be a little bit because of what they've encountered. I think they would take that in, into consideration. Probably talking about a 16th of an inch at the most and they can. That's about what Boyer's car was out of whack last year at Loudoun and that got him in trouble. So tight tolerances are a part of our world these days. 27 cars on the lead lap facing the green flag. Kyle Busch and Kevin Harvick in front of Brad Keselowski and Mark Martin back into turn one. And Busch scrambling to try to hold on to second as Harvick scoots away. Second, Chevy Dodge Toyota, the front three. Look at this three wide. And Kurt Busch up in the loose stuff. It's a scramble. Hangs on. It is a scramble, man, on these restarts. They're everywhere. Up against the wall, down on the apron. 
Daryl what I'm seeing is that more than ever Phoenix is racing like a short track because it's a long hold tenant of short track racing. The best opportunity to make your passes is on a restart. Got to get them while they're all bunched up. You can get a whole lot. You can get a whole bunch of them that way. Once they get strung out it's a little more difficult. Keslowski slipped. Here comes Hamlin on the inside. And Edwards stacks him up with Ryan Newman and Jeff Gordon Ooh. has to bail out of it in turn three. Boy, Carl did a good job not to get into the 39 car. Newman and Newman did a good job not to get into 24. Gordon, that was all tight racing. These are all drivers that stayed out under that last caution, elected not to come to pit road. Biffle up high. Wags the tail just a bit getting into turn one. But the top running driver right now, as we see right here, a battle for the lead. Kevin Harvick in the 29 underneath Kyle Busch in the 18. Kevin Harvick led this race earlier, wanting to lead again. I just think running uh, yesterday's race, Larry, would be invaluable with this reconfigured racetrack to get information that some people may not have. And both of those drivers ran yesterday's race, Kyle Busch and Kevin Harvick. Kyle Busch completes the pass and goes back to the lead where he was running before the caution. And now Edwards back to work on Ryan Newman on the outside. This is for 11th. With Jeff Burton looking on in the 31. Daryl, to your point, our top four drivers yeah. ran the race yesterday. Yeah, Kyle Busch, Harvick, Kozlowski, and Hamlin. And they all were uh, very competitive, ran up front. Look at Mark Martin in the 55 as he battles Denny Hamlin. Mark is going to run a partial schedule most of the races, 24, 25 or so this season. Uh, Michael Waltrip will run a few. And uh, yeah, just it was announced yesterday, Elliot Sadler yeah. starting at Bristol is going to run about five races for MWR this year. But uh, Mark's not reaching for his AARP card just yet. He is still very much a part of this, as evidenced by the poll run yesterday. And uh, his race today, he's in fourth place. It's a typical Mark Martin race to me. Early on, he didn't push the issue. He let people go. Now that they're strung out a little bit, he's got his car like he wants it. Now he's racing. And I know we keep saying 53-year-old Mark Martin, but I promise you, he's probably in better shape than two-thirds of our drivers. Has a very strong workout regimen, and what energizes his workout is music. The man loves rap music. He must have it turned up wide open right now because he's wrapping on up there. Martin in fourth. Let's go back uh, about 15th place. Back around Marcus Ambrose, Greg Biffle, Kurt Busch. There is Biffle in 15th. Matt. Mike, the balance is better, but still loose for Greg Biffle, typically at New Hampshire and Martinsville. We'll see the crew members who are the brake specialists travel to the races now at Phoenix. The speeds are up. They're braking much more violent, especially here at Phoenix. Biffle thinks he has some kind of braking issue. Matt Fuchsia looks at the car every time by. Your rotors are not glowing, although others are, but we'll pull some tape. That's the game plan on the next time he hits pit road to get a little more cooling to the brakes. Yeah, Matt, we go to Martinsville, our shortest track. We all think about brakes, brakes, brakes. But here, the speeds, and you don't have that real low gear to slow you down when you go off in the corner. I wouldn't be happy if I had uh, tape on my brake ducts. No, That's sir. not a very good idea. Kyle Busch leads the Subway Fresh Fit 500 by half a second over Kevin Harvick, Mark Martin, and Brad Keselowski. NASCAR on Fox is sponsored by GEICO. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. By AT&T, the nation's largest 4G network. AT&T, rethink possible. By Pizza Hut, order the new $10 dinner box today. And by Aaron's, credit is hard, Aaron's is easy. Glad you're watching NASCAR on Fox from Phoenix. Now it's time for our AT&T 
mid-race report. Moments ago, Carl Edwards just said on the radio, this car is fast. Carl Edwards moving up inside the top 12 after being outside the top 20 much of the time. And anytime Kyle Busch and Kevin Harvick are near each other, that's big news because they have a history of not liking each other, but that's the top of the leaderboard. Darrell, who are you keeping an eye on? Chris, we talked about they're doing great pit work in the pits. He started on the pole. He loves short tracks, and that's how this thing's racing today. Keep an eye on the 5-5. Five five. Well, I'm looking at Dale Earnhardt Jr. because he was almost a lap down outside the top 25. He got a break. A caution fell inside the top 20. Now he just ran his fastest lap of the race. Dale Jr. is on the move. Yeah, M Michael, we've gathered a lot of information about what to do on pit road. We see that the left side tires are wearing and changing them does a lot. Steve Burns, my last pit stop anytime after lap 230, left side tires on. Will a loose right rear wheel keep Timmy Johnson from winning this race? He had to restart back in 25th after running out front most of the day. He is now marching one at a time. He says the car is good, but trying to be patient, Mike Joy. Thanks, Steve. Look carefully at the top 10 at halfway, including last year's winner, Jeff Gordon, currently ninth. In the last 10 races at Phoenix, the winner has been in the top 10 at the halfway mark. Chris? And Mike, we should keep an eye on Daytona 500 winner, Matt Kenseth in the top 10 as well. That is your AT&T mid-race report, Mike. A lot of racing to go here in the Arizona desert. Yeah, we're only halfway home. Weather, not a factor. Nice to see that after a long week in Daytona Beach to get the 500 in. Ending very early in the wee hours of Tuesday morning. Matt Kenseth, the winner. Kyle Busch in control right now over Kevin Harvick by the narrowest of margins. One car length. Harvick continues to stalk the race leader. Now these first three cars here, the 18, the 29, and the 55, running real equal lap times. Harvick might be a tad quicker than the, the 18 of Bush. Guys, when you look at our top nine drivers right now, from Kyle Bush all the way back to Jeff Gordon, remember they all stayed out on that last caution. About another 25 laps, they'll have to make a green flag pit stop should we not get that caution. Top three all under a blanket. Brad Kozlowski is 3.2 seconds back with Hamlin on his bumper. Hey, watch this. <laughs> For the lead, Harvick looks inside and is denied at turn three. Boy, while those guys are going at it, look at Mark Martin in that 55 car. He's just slowly but surely reeling them in. There, he's sitting there lurking right now. He truly is. Mark's like what he's seeing. I mean, Mark's a smart guy. He's analyzing these two guys. He's go ahead and wear your stuff out. You know, the amazing thing about Mark Martin, with several races to go in 2011, he really didn't even know if he was going to have a ride for 2012 because he was looking for what Michael Waltrip gave him, an opportunity to run a semi-partial schedule. Traffic. Harvick to the outside, but Kyle Busch to the inside of the wounded Paul Menard car. Harvick's a little quicker right now, Mike. He's just, he's really stalking the 18 there, trying to figure out and get an opening here. If he does, I think it probably blow right by him. And we know there's no love lost between those two drivers right there. A lot of past history with them in yeah. all the series. Good thing it's not late in the race. <laughs> Both on track and off. Oh, Kyle comes almost up into the side of David Stremme's number 30. Harvick goes to the apron and back up for the lead into three. And Kyle shoves it in there a car length further. And, and see, Mark is sitting there waiting for something to happen here. And hopefully nothing bad. He just wants something to happen so he can make his move. Can't pass them both unless they get together. Larry, if you're Kevin Harvick's crew chief right now, what do you tell him? Well, I probably just let him do his own deal, but I'm a little bit nervous right now. I, I think this just goes to show you where our sport's at right now. They know leading laps, getting bonus points, every single point you can get is important for the big picture, and that's making the chase in the championship. It's rather frustrating to be sitting there like uh, Harvey is, and you see here now he's got a pretty good run alongside of Kyle. Might even do a little side drafting off of him if that's possible. But he'd get a little bit annoyed, and Kyle just overdrove the corner. That's what that smoke was. That was brake smoke or exactly. possibly even...
sliding the wheel. Slid the right front a little bit and that opened the door and there goes Harvick right by with Mark in hot pursuit. Michael Waltrip with 144 laps to go. Why would two drivers be beating each other's brains out like this with so much of this race left to run? Because they don't like each other. <laughs> They're not going to give this fight up. You saw Kyle Busch overshoot the turn. He slid into turn one. That's not like Kyle Busch. He's aggressive, but he makes very few mistakes. That's how much he wants to outrun Kevin Harvick. Well, that's where he was really beating uh, Harvey Cat the most, was getting into the corner. And you could see why, because he was really carrying a lot of speed in there. He just overdid it into one. And while those drivers were doing it, driver we're riding with, Brad Keselowski in that two, he was coming to the picture. That's right, he's moved up to within 1.8 seconds of the lead with 143 to go in Phoenix. A fresh Fit 500 is sponsored by Frost Brewed Coors Light, the world's most refreshing beer. By Sprint, proud sponsor of the NASCAR Sprint Cup Series. By Napa, Napa Know How. And by GoDaddy.com, domains, websites, and everything in between. Kevin Harvick leads Mark Martin by eight tenths of a second. Friday, the Ultimate Fighter premieres live only on FX, making its debut at its new home. 32 contenders face off in a special two-hour premiere event. The Ultimate Fighter, now live, Friday, 9 p.m. only on FX. There is Kevin Harvick beginning to stretch it out just a little bit as he laps past David Gilliland. 49, J.J. Yaley. A couple of laps down as Mark Martin makes his way through. You know, Larry, uh, Childress made some changes on his race teams in the offseason. Right now, Harvick has a new crew chief. He and Shane Wilson. Shane Wilson uh, was with Boyer. And this looks like maybe a good combination, Harvick and Shane Wilson. It, it truly does. They had a great run and a great finish at Daytona. Now, just to bring you up to speed, we've been talking about our top nine drivers did not pit that last caution. And it looks like that we're going to probably see those drivers have to hit pit road here in the next little bit. In fact, Chris Devota told me that Kevin Harvick, he thinks that maybe he's not full of fuel. He may be coming earlier than any of the other drivers. And Kyle Busch is coming in now. Green flag pit stop for a driver who's led 52 laps earlier today. Harvick now 1.9 seconds ahead of Mark Martin with Keselowski three and a half back. Here's Matt. Mike, about 15 laps ago, Dave Rogers asked Kyle how his left sides were doing. He said he had a slight vibration. They were planning on pitting in about 10 more laps. And then he just keyed to Mike and said, I'm coming now, I'm coming now, I'm coming now. Left side tires going on. Fuel's in a little bit slow up on the front. He's away. Now we've been talking about strategy because the driver has to stay there till they fill that tank up with 19 and a half gallons of Snoko race fuel. Everyone will change four tires under these green flag stops. Kurt Busch is in. Again, these are scheduled pit stops. Back to Matt. One of Kurt Busch's favorite racetracks here at Phoenix. The last time they took on four tires, the car was loose, still on the free side for the 51. Air pressure change. They were talking about it, waiting on that fuel, and he's finally away. Well, there are two components to the fuel question. One is, do you have enough fuel? And two, are these new electric pumps that are part of the engine management fuel injection system getting all that fuel to the engine? Krista. Matt Kenseth is saying his car was shaking a bit. They thought they might have a fuel pressure problem. Their plan was to come in around lap 194. Matt said, okay, I think we're okay. But if he comes in early, that's the issue. That would be in 11 laps from now. And when your tires start to wear, and here comes Mark Martin on pit road along with Harvick. Crystal down to Crystal. Speaking of fuel mileage, the question for the 29 of Kevin Harvick, how far can we push it? They had planned on coming in right now. Kevin took left side tires back on lap 112. It's a four tire change. They said make sure you get it full of fuel. Steve? number one for Mark Martin. He said the balance on his car was great, but it has gotten tight as the tires wear out. Mark Martin stops safely into his pit stall. They're going to take a little bit of air out of the right front tire. And again, 
and his car had gotten just a little bit tight on the number 55 of Mark Martin Krista. Joey Logano has steadily improved his race car throughout the race. The last stop in, he said, I need to drive in deeper. They've been a lot better every stop they've made it. Joey Logano saying he was chattering the right front a bit as the team goes to work on the car, making a four-tire change for Joey Logano. Papa Montoya stopped and got four. Here comes Tony Stewart, the reigning Sprint Cup champion on to pit road, along with um, other cars, Greg Biffle is in as well as we cycle through green flag pit stops Matt and Stewart who's raced here in six different types of racing machines the outside pole center brings his car to a stop he was asking where they were as well on the fuel cycle the 16 of Greg Biffle is in Stewart still extremely tight on entry to turn one and then center on exit down in three and four chassis adjustment already completed on the 16 of Biffle his car is way too loose but getting better meanwhile the two car Brad Keselowski, he's coming down the pit road as well. His car calling for a slight air pressure change. They've made a lot of headway on this machine here today. Dave Blaney is in, and here comes Denny Hamlin, who picked up the race lead. Keselowski getting four tires. Just to go to show you how much brake these drivers are using, the front wheels on Brad Keselowski's car when he came in, they were black with all that brake dust. The fresh wheels are, are painted pretty yellow. And Larry, I'd like to stay out as long as I can. I'd like to see what everybody else is going to do. I'd like to be like one of the last guys on pit road so I can decide what I need to do. Matt? In the 11 of Hamlin, chassis adjustment already completed. They tried to stretch as long as they could. Four tires for Hamlin. Krista? Jeff Gordon also making a crowd on the racetrack. Last stop, he said, I need to free it up in the middle of the turns. Do not do it with the track bar. You don't see any changes being made in the back of the car. The team going to work on the right side, coming around to the left. It's a four-tire change for Jeff Gordon. And importantly, Gordon stayed out on the track to lead a lap, the first lap he's led today, picking up a bonus point. Here comes Matt Kenseth to pit road along with Jimmy Johnson and Ryan Newman. Kristen. Well, Matt Kenseth was saying he was so loose at the start of the run, he couldn't keep up with guys like Kevin Harvick. The race car started to come around. Matt coming in for his stop right now. Also, four tires for the 17. No fuel pressure problem. They were able to make it to their scheduled distance. And the comments from Jimmy Johnson, he's saying the car is now free. It feels like it has stalled out. He said, I'm really having to protect my entry into the corners. They're going to take four tires. Dick? Carl Edwards started in the 24th spot, worked his way up to the 12th position, and said the car was only half as bad as it was at the start of the race. He's going to come in for an adjustment, tires and fuel. Travis Quapple in and out. Here comes Regan Smith and David Stremme onto the pit lane. Now, we have cycled through all of the drivers that made that stop earlier. Dick Bergman, how about Regan Smith? Well, Regan Smith started in the third position, Larry, and just sort of went back in the chassis. Simply has not been good for him. They've had shatters in the car, and, and everybody seems to be able to get by him on the bottom. Smith cannot hold that bottom lane. Marcus Ambrose coming in just in front of Smith and Dale Earnhardt Jr. in as well, Krista. Yeah, it's been an interesting race for Dale Earnhardt Jr. They had that tire rub earlier on their last stop. They were one of the cars that came in on lap 134 for left side tires. You see Dale Earnhardt Jr. who carried the banner for Hendrick Motorsports last week in Daytona coming down pit lane for his stop. That leaves seven drivers on track who stopped earlier, led by Jeff Burton in the number 31 Chevrolet. Martin Truix, Eric Almarola, Bobby Labonte, uh, then Rudiman, McMurray, and Allmendinger. And the reason these drivers right here, like Denny Hamlin and Kyle Busch in the 1118, they're battling hard because they're one lap down the leader, Jeff Burton. Remember, if we get a caution, the first driver one lap down gets back on the lead lap. Right now, that's Mark Martin in that 50. Five car trying to get the lap back the hard way by our leader Jeff Burton in 31. Fresh tires against worn tires in the case of Burton. Got to be careful when you're in Burton's position because these guys are going to be closing fast. You see Mark gets by. Here comes Keselowski in the two car. They'll run over you when they got those fresh tires on. Bobby Labonte and David Ruderman have also made pit stops as we continue under green in Phoenix. 117 laps to go. 
Now Martin Truex also has not pitted. He's the second place car to Burton. So now just four remain on the racetrack. Burton, Truex, Jamie McMurray, and A.J. Allmendinger. Brendan gone in the pit lane. And with 116 laps to go for all of the drivers, the ones that's pitted and the ones that's not, it is a one-stop race to get to the end of lap 312. Well, we'll see how that strategy plays out for Jeff Burton, the senior driver on the Richard Childress team. We're heard is coming pit side this time and will surrender the lead to Martin Truex. That lead was about 1.3 seconds as Truex flashes past. And it'll be the first time that the New Jersey driver has led today. He's been fast, Martin Truex Jr. in the 56 all weekend long. Actually got into the wall a little bit at the end of that first practice, but they repaired the car map. Burton pleased with the 31 machine. He said it's free in the middle of three and four. He just needs a little more rear grip on exit, which was really the most positive part of the car early on. Chassis adjustment, four tires. His spotter, Brett Griffin, reminding him, remember, you have issues with your tack. You don't have any lights. Watch your speed. Thanks, Matt. Now let's talk Tru Truex here because he's about eight tenths of a second slower than the fastest cars on the racetrack. You stay out and protect that lead, you come in and get some fresh good years. We've seen it over and over again. You got to get tires on it. You can't sit there and lose this much time because now when you pit, you're going to just come out that much further behind. So I'd be coming to pit road pretty darn quick. McMurray in second with some crash damage. Likewise, A.J. Allmendinger in third. They are hoping that a caution comes out and they can pit without losing all that track time. That's the game that they're playing. Now, there you see A.J. Allmendinger in the 22. He hits pit road. McMurray and Allmendinger, a lot of damage, really nothing to lose gambling there. Paul Menard also in the pit lane. A lot of crash damage on his car, same incident. And, you know, historically, this place, we're under a long green run, and that's kind of how this place goes. We'll probably have a couple of cautions late in the race, so whatever you're going to do, you better get it right now. Yeah, you may only get one more chance to adjust on that race car. That's it, buddy. So with these two pitting, that leaves Truex and McMurray out on the racetrack. Then Kevin Harvick, the first of the cars that pitted beginning at about lap 184 and these long runs like this Mike that's when you that's when you start to have brake trouble and you'll hear guys talking about vibration they, it's not the tires it's the brakes once the pads wear and the rotors warp a little bit when you hit the brake the car wants to vibrate how long can Martin Truex hold on before making the pit stop we'll find out The Subway Fresh Fit 500 on Fox is sponsored by Subway Restaurants. Hurry in to Subway for the Jalapeno Tuna, featured $5 footlong of March. 207 laps complete. As you have a look at Carl Edwards in 19th place. One lap ago, Martin Truex surrendered the lead. Jamie McMurray led a lap, and now he comes to pit side, and that will complete the cycle. A green flag stops. J.J. Yaley and Mike Bliss also made pit stops while we were away. We were getting a report that McMurray had ran out of fuel, but fortunately at the end of the back stretch, so it timed out perfect for him. Away, it's gone. I think is uh, that Jimmy Johnson coming on pit road now? That's actually Casey That's Kane Casey in the five. Casey car, the five. Got you. Now remember, Jimmy Johnson had to restart 25th after replacing the right rear lug nuts and wheel three times and three different stops on one caution period. Boy, he's climbed the ladder. He's up to eight. And remember, Steve Burns talked about him in the mid-race report, and Steve, he's done that without having a caution to aid him. Yeah, they've told him to be very patient. Just pass one at a time, Larry Mack. In fact, Jimmy just reported the adjustments we made on the last stop have really helped the car. It is no longer loose. And it's showing, uh, Steve, because he is cutting some pretty fast laps right now. And just to follow up a little bit about the conversation of would the car be out of tolerance, you do have a tolerance, you know, as far as measurements go, particularly in the, I think, in the tread width in that area. So, and then if you have a problem during the race, NASCAR will work with yes, you will. after inspection. Johnson moving under Tony Stewart. This is for seven. And here comes Truex on fresh tires. Whoopee. Against Earnhardt Jr. and Biffle. 
So he stayed out, made his stop after leading a bunch of laps, and he is now still on the lead lap, 19 seconds back, and trying to break a winless streak that stretches back to June of 2007 at Dover. It's been 168 races since Martin's been to victory lane. And when you're down on the apron like that making passes, it is absolutely crucial that the spotter lets everybody know he's on the apron and he's coming up. And we got a car smoking here. Oh, Jamie Mack. Four. He, that, he's got an engine issue. That's coming out the exhaust yeah, pipe. And you like could hear it when he came down the front straightaway like he's down a cylinder. Jamie Mack got to lead a lap. And five laps after that, looks like he's headed for pit road. Now, Larry, I, I, with this new electronic fuel injection, I don't think this could be a, this could happen. But he ran that car out of fuel. I wonder if that had anything to do with the issue now with the engine. But you can hear him when he comes down the front stretch. It sounds like it's down a cylinder. So McMurray gets down off the racetrack. The black flag would mean he would be ordered to the pits. They'll head there as Jimmy Johnson moves past Joey Logano for seventh place. And man, Jimmy Johnson was below the yellow line, got that nose up along the side of the 20 car, and he just forced his way by. He's down below the yellow line right there, and he just makes it up through. Forcey Logano knew he was at. He had a little room. Very little. You know, when Jeff Hammond was up on the spotter stand, he talked about how well the 48 car looked like it was rolling in the middle. And it's pretty much right there. You're, you're off the throttle. You hadn't quite picked the throttle. And the car's almost turning on its own. I mean, it's just the car is really turning great. And it is. Let's move up into the top five. Now, Kyle Busch led a bunch of laps today, 52 of them so far. And Matty finds himself in fifth place, 10 seconds back. Well, his car has certainly taken a turn for the worse, Mike. Kyle came on the radio and said that the kite is just absolutely way too tight. He cannot hold the bottom at all. He's really struggling compared to what he was earlier. He's also concerned, talking to Dave Rogers, whether it's the car being tight or if the racetrack is starting to make a dramatic change as the day is wearing on. Krista? Matt, what a roller coaster day for Jeff Gordon. After starting 30th, he fought his way all the way up into the top 10. That's where he runs right now. But he came on the radio a few laps ago and told his team, we have gone too far. The car is loose in, tight under throttle. Right now, this car is junk. You know, back to Matt's report, that's not uncharacteristic of a racetrack like this. Now that we've run over 200 laps and this rubber keeps going down on the racetrack, you can see it keeps getting blacker and blacker in the groove, and I'm not hearing many, as many drivers complain about being loose as in the early part of the race. Two things have to happen with Kyle Busch in the 18. First of all, he has to not wreck that car because that's a history he has of getting frustrated and drive overdriving and getting it in the wall. Second of all, move around. Move up. Move around on the racetrack. Find a groove. Kevin Harvick is your leader with 94 laps to go in the Subway Fresh Fit 500. Get ready, race. I like it hot. I like it slick. Boogity, boogity, boogity. All right, bud, it's going to be a dog fight, we know it. And I've been wanting to say this for a while, boss. New leader, 48. We got a problem. Sorry, my tire's flat. Give me down. Go one up, one up, one up, one up. Go like hell, go like hell. Hard, 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 hard. Welcome back to Phoenix, where the Subway Fresh Fit 500 has 85 laps to go. Walk and drown, walk and drown. Can you say perfect timing? Fifth time today that we've waved the yellow flag. This comes at lap 228 with Kevin Harvick. It's lead of 2.7 seconds over Denny Hamlin and Mark Martin. Now he raced. You might say perfect timing. The drivers and their teams are saying not because I think a lot of them are going to be just outside the fuel window. That's where I like to be, just on the edge. Maybe I can make it. 
debris in turns three and four is the reason for this caution. Juan Pablo Montoya gets the free pass. On this fifth caution flag of the day. And that will give us 21 cars on the lead lap when we restart. See, Mike, guess what I was talking about pit strategy. Now it's a perfect situation. Maybe I can, somebody will try to make it. And what's really going to be interesting, I think, is the tire strategy here because this might be your last opportunity to put tires on. We could see a mixed bag. I think a lot of drivers will go with four, but Krista, how about our race leader? Kevin Harvick is in. He said, you guys, when we took left side tires earlier in this race, that was magic. Crew Chief Shane Wilson warned him, we can't make it on one can of fuel, but that's what they do. Matt? And the 11 of Danny Hamlin hits pit road in the second position. He says his car's a little bit on the loose end, but he likes it because it's really helping him rotate to the center of the corner, Steve. Matt, Mark Martin saying his car is just a little bit too tight. They're going to take left side tires and make a small chassis adjustment for Mark Martin. Thanks, Steve. Mark's last win 82 races ago. And when he won here in 2009 in this race, it broke a 97 race winless streak. Left side tires is not, it's not a gamble. It's the right call to make. We've seen it work for everybody. See, Jimmy Johnson went with two tires. I think that's the first time they have went with two tires today. And Larry, we've talked about track position. You can't afford to sit there right now. If everybody's going to take two and you take four, you'll never get to the front. Let's get down to Chris Myers at the Hollywood Hotel. Thanks, Mike, with Michael Waltrip in time for an AT&T race break brought to you by the nation's largest 4G network, Rethink Possible. We have a record number of leaders for a Phoenix race. That is 15. Kevin Harvick has led the most laps at 83. It's been a little bit of action. Casey Kane, one of the favorites coming in, who lacked one on this track in the fall, had problems early. Had come back in and then breaks for Casey Mears. Yeah, how would you like to dive into turn one at about 160 miles an hour, not have any breaks? That's what happened to Mears. You could see there coming off two Kozlowski side, or excuse me, that's Almendinger sideways. Jamie Murray in the back over the cause of the crash. With Paul Menard and then earlier Kyle Busch and Kevin Harvick uh, racing each other hard. Kyle makes it easy for everybody not to like him. That was a comment from Kevin Harvick back in the media tour when they talked about each other. Their history goes back to 2010 and we've seen that play out right now or at least going into the caution. Kevin Harvick was your leader. Kyle Busch led the second most laps at 52. Do you still put those two as guys to watch towards the finish? If it's a sprint to the finish for sure. They're really fast as soon as they throw the green flag. You've watched on every restart and even the start of the race. Mark Martin fell back for a few laps before getting his car under him so he could charge back to the front. If it's a dash to the finish, it'd be pretty cool to see Harvick and Kyle Busch battling for it. And the brakes, it's not going to get any better for any driver. No, your brakes are hot now. They're only going to get hotter. You saw what happens if you have a pedal fade at all. He was on his brakes, but it didn't stop the car, slow the car down enough, and around the car went. Jeff Hammond is at the smart board here in the Hollywood Hotel to help us understand a little bit more of the brakes picture. That's a little odd, you at the smart board, but we'll figure it out. <laughs> well, I, I really appreciate that, Chris. Again, <laughs> you know, you know, but again, well, let's go over here to our Ford Racing Tech car, and we can give you some idea, kind of like what's going on in here, because one of the key things, and Larry McReynolds has talked about it, Darrell Walters has been talking about it, is what can the drivers do as far as taking care of their brakes? One thing, keep your foot off it. But the other thing, we don't want to ever lose sight of the fact lo is located right here, and this is the brake adjuster. This is where you can adjust the front or rear brake. It's real simple. The driver can dial a little bit more front brake in if he needs it, or he can back that off if that's what the car requires as far as getting in the corner. It's real important that he doesn't over adjust these brakes and all of a sudden, fail the front or fail the rear, which we probably saw in Casey Mears situation, guys. All right, thank you, Jeff. AT&T's fastest driver challenge. Remember to text FAST at 34763 or go to fastestdriver.com for a chance to win four Gs. Well, you talk about Martin Trick staying out. What happened there? They used that strategy. They didn't think they could make it on fuel to this point, so they just stayed out, grabbed that track position. All right, let's uh, listen in on some radio communication. You fit here, everybody's got to fit one more time. You got 20 laps on tires. I'm thinking you stay out here. Where you stay, bud? We're going to stay out, stay out. There's no way we can make it on fuel, so we're staying out. 
That's interesting strategy. You have to stop once more anyway, so why not gamble now instead of later? Well, yesterday, tires were not, you know, one car finished third and took no tires, so there's all kind of tire strategies going on. Now, what's interesting, with 21 drivers on the lead lap, we had three drivers, Dick, that topped off Jeff Gordon, Matt Kenseth, and Kurt Busch. Dick? I'll tell you what, you want to keep an eye on True Action, that 56, because lap after lap before that round of pit stops, he was the quickest car and uh, indeed he can't make it all the way to the end but no changes on his last pit stop so he's got some stuff for the end of this race. David Rudiman and A.J. Allmendinger took the wave around to come back onto the lead lap. J.J. Yaley along with David Reagan also took the wave around. Getting ready for the restart. Jimmy Johnson what a climb back into the top five he's had. Truex, Harvey, Keselowski, Martin into turn one. It's going to be dicey. This is when you get all bottled up. Three wide on the apron in the wall. Look out. Logano inside of the 48 of Johnson. Whoa, Burton gets squirrely in the 31, but he hung on. He had a rough ride coming up off that apron. Yeah, Jimmy Johnson had to really give Logano some room right there. That could have been big. Truex the leader from Harvick. Keslowski, Hamlin, and Martin. It, Ambrose. It, it's go time, Mike. I mean, right now is decisive. You got to get your track position. You got to get up front and stay there. Logano and Ambrose. Logano takes the spot. Sixth place for Marcus Ambrose. Biffle is coming, and there's Johnson in 48. Steve. As soon as Jimmy Johnson hit pit road, Mike, and left, Bridget Jack Canal said, "Save gas immediately. This is important. You are three laps short right now. If it stays green, save, save." If I'm three laps short and I can save the, just a teeny bit, I don't know if I can do it down here on the apron trying to pass these guys or not, but I think he can make it. I think there are a number of guys that are going to try to make it. Yeah, he thought twice, Jimmy Johnson in the 48, about going three wide going off into turn three. He rolled out. Michael, how about saving gas? Well, there's a couple of things you can do. Obviously, let off the gas a little bit earlier and be careful how you get back on the gas. But Daryl, what about cutting the back straightaway there? You cut that little kink enough times, it's gonna gain you some ground. Well, you might you might save a little gas, but I don't know about saving your race car when they're three wide like that. Michael, what have y'all learned as far as differences in saving fuel with the old four barrel carburetor and this electronic fuel injection we're running? I think they just think the, the engines are running more efficiently, Larry, so there isn't as much that a driver can do to save gas. But easy on the gas and easy off of it is certainly going to get you a little bit better mileage. In the mapping of these uh, electronic boxes in the car, you can work on your uh, a diesel fuel cutoff. In other words, when you're off the gas, you can work on that, and you never were able to do that before. We got engines now that talk to us, and they can talk to the engine tuner and tell it what it needs. Here comes Hamlin for third, inside of Keslowski, turn two. Not during the race now. That's a tuning thing, not during the race. Behind them, inching in. Well, well behind them. Now there's the 31 of Burton and the 48 of Jimmy Johnson battling, but Mark Martin and Joey Logano are catching up the third place battle. Then along comes Newman, Smith, Labonte in the picture. Third place here. And Hamlin having trouble completing the pass on Keslowski's deuce. Darrell, they keep fooling around. They're going to have two more right with them. Oh, yeah, this is going to get exciting up near the front. And, I, and I, I think some of these guys are saying, look, we can't make it race hard. There's a few other guys that are saying, we can make it if you save a little fuel. So we've got a couple of little deals going on right here, right now. You know, not too far behind these two drivers racing this hard, Hamlin Keselowski, a driver that we have not talked about all day long. He started back in 24th position. The man that tied Tony Stewart in points last year but lost the tiebreaker, Carl Edwards in that 99 car has cracked the top 10. He's up in ninth. Running four and a half seconds off the lead, which Martin Truex Jr. is now stretching out a bit over Kevin Harvick. Now, they were telling him, I was getting a report to save fuel. He also was one of the drivers that went with just two tires on that last stop. 
71 laps to go in the desert. Martin Truex Jr. your leader Kevin Harvick second. You're watching NASCAR on Fox. Sixty seven laps to go in the Subway Fresh Pit 500 and Martin Truex sees his rearview mirror beginning to fill up with Kevin Harvick who has cut the gap down to seven tenths of a second and closing. Denny Hamlin one point nine back Brad Keselowski two point six and Mark Martin. The top five. Uh oh, a lot of smoke out of David Rudiman's car. That looks pretty, uh, pretty it's serious. Real heavy. Caution's out. Caution's out. Lap 247. Caution waves for Rudiman. <laughs> now, what are you going to do? <laughs> well, I know what I'm going to do if I'm Martin Truex and his race team. I'm going to get the pit road. I know I can make it from here now. Some of these guys that were thinking they could maybe possibly make it, this caution ought to give them some insurance. I feel like three drivers that will stay out were the three drivers that topped off there with 80 to go, Jeff Gordon, Matt Kenseth, and Kurt Busch. I'd be willing to bet those three drivers will stay out. Pit road's open. Let's see who the takers are this time around. Bobby Labonte gets the free pass. And so we'll restart with 24 on the lead lap. And Tony Stewart is not maintaining race pace. No, he's uh, he's coasting. All right, true. Back. Smart. Back on. Logano is in. Jeff Burton, Kyle Busch. A bunch of the leaders have come to pit road. Dick. Unclear as to what Martin Truex is going to do. They had not decided until this very moment what they were going to do with tire strategy. Two tires or four tires. The answer is four. Truex now will be able to make it all the way to the end. Matt. And the issue for Tony Stewart, he shut his engine off like he used to traditionally with the carbureted engines to try to save fuel. It would not refire. That's what he's telling the team. He was 13th at the time. Well, there is a, is a refire procedure that you have to go through. You got to turn everything off and then start all over again. You got it's like resetting your computer. Now he will stay on the lead lap. If he gets a push to pit road and uh, see if they can get him fire. Let's go back to the Martin Truex pit stop. Self venting cans and a little bit of a little bit more splash than go right there. Yeah, he's slipping and sliding right there. Can't get any traction. Yeah, you know, it doesn't have to be completely full right there because we know they can go about 80 laps on fuel and that was 60 something to go. And now Tony Stewart has gone a lap down as they push him onto pit road during this caution for smoke from the back of David Rudiman's car. I mean, there's Daryl, there's just so many differences in how you crank a car with this electronic fuel injection versus a carburetor. You don't pat the throttle. It does no good. There's just so many things. And, I, and, and part of it is a learning experience. Last week at Daytona, you're wide open all the time. Here, part throttle and on and off the gas. And now we got this. Working the sixth caution of the race with 63 laps to go. Tony Stewart makes it to a stop. In his pit. I think everybody's in the same boat, Larry. They would run around and do something, but I don't think they really know what to do. And you can see a lot of attention being paid to the top. The engine is cranking, but will not fire. A lot of attention being paid right there because that's where that ECU box that controls the electronic fuel injection. You can see one of the mechanics working in that area. Well, there's a specific <laughs> shutdown and restart procedure to re-energize that box and the fuel pumps. And if they can't get it cranked, they may have to go behind the wall and hook the computer to it to try to diagnose exactly what's going on. All right, we listened in to Tony Stewart and team as they try to diagnose this. Well, I shut it off to save fuel and I turned it back on and it won't fire now. I've cycled the whole power off and on. I can't get it to do anything. Both batteries, switch battery. Work yeah. continues as Stewart's car 
remains motionless on pit road two laps down and it is it's frustrating because you, you really don't know what to do it's all new to these teams electronic engine management time now for our five hour energy big move of the race Kevin Harvick harassed Kyle Busch lap after lap after lap until this going off in the corner Bush locks up the brake and Harvick gets the lead. Kevin Harvick is our race leader under caution from Denny Hamlin Brad Keselowski Marcus Ambrose now up to fourth and Greg Biffle Chris. Yeah Mike really the, the race three stages Kevin Harvick dominating the first portion Jimmy Johnson in the middle we saw Kyle Busch and now it's been a scramble with Harvick back out in front after Martin Truex we saw the problems with Tony Stewart uh, Michael how do you relate that to the car we might drive uh, on our own it's equivalent to the check engine light coming on Chris I never know what the heck that means sometimes my car won't go when it's on though and and that's what these teams are faced with this EFI electronic fuel injections all new to them so when something goes wrong you just turn batteries off and switch things around and see if it'll go again we saw with Martin Truex Jr. Michael Waltrip racing the fuel being splashed around let's check on fuel strategy and we'll start with Chris Devota. Chris the driver working hard in the car Kevin Harvick but the fingers are flying atop the pit box Shane Wilson the crew chief and the engineers because they don't know if they can make it the distance before this caution came out they thought they were nine laps short they didn't come in because they couldn't afford the track position Shane Wilson is hoping his driver could save that much Dick Marcus Ambrose car number nine short on fuel they're gonna need another pit stop Matt yeah. And the 11 of Denny Hamlin, basically, Darian Grubb told him, what I need you to do is to basically give me a pause on the front stretch and back stretch every time to try to save fuel. They feel like they're very close, Steve. And Matt, Jimmy Johnson battling back from that loose wheel on lap 132, saying the car is really coming to me. Chad Knauss' message is the same thing, save, save, save. My understanding is, is you can do all those things. That's what we used to do. My understanding is with the mapping in that box, the engine only uses what fuel it needs. It, you have a cutoff uh, system in the box. It uh, tells the engine it doesn't need fuel. It's all on throttle position. So I think all that stuff they're going through now is really a waste of time. But I do think off the throttle, still, even with the fuel injection, is going to save you some fuel. It might. Tony Stewart back in the race, two laps down. 59 to go when we get the green flag. Harvick and Hamlin on the front row. Keslowski with Ambrose, Biffle and Edwards, Johnson and Newman, Regan Smith, and Jeff Gordon, the top 10. Here we go. It's going to get a little bit crazy right over here. Advantage Hamlin. You know, a driver that has slipped here in the top five who had a ill handling race car when this race started. He wiggled a little bit right there. Greg Biffle in that 16 car. But now he's got pressure from Marcus Ambrose in the nine. Dick Berger talked about Marcus, possibly another pit stop to get to the end. Watch that nine car or 99 car right there on that yellow car. He has really found his legs too, Larry, and he's up there now. Edward Subway Ford on the march, sixth place. Right behind Ambrose and wiggles just a bit. And for Marcus Ambrose and all his followers in the Aussie V8 Supercar Series, Ford at Clipsal, 1-2 today. Holden won yesterday in the season opener. Ryan Newman, what a job he's done in a backup car as he battles side-by-side -side with Edwards into turn three, four, whoa, six. Whoa, whoa, there he goes. And around he goes. He and Carl got together. Carl Yellow is out. Yellow is out. Just uh, slipped up the hill a little bit. Carl yeah, got, got it under him. Ten more. What does that caution flag do for our strategy? Well, every caution lap you run helps because it's roughly a two to one ratio. Two caution laps to one green flag lap. So. All these drivers that are marginal, they love every caution lap they can get right here. This is a great learning experience for fuel injection and the EFI and that brain in the car. These guys are going to learn so much about how to.
to increase their gas mileage, how to milk it right here today. Ryan Newman was sixth on the outside of Carl Edwards when they made contact at turn four. <laughs> Jimmy Johnson in that 48, he just went by both of them. And here's a look from the blimp, top of your screen, entering turn three. Yeah, just side by side, the hard to stay down on the bottom. Carl gets a little wiggle, and uh, then the 39 car, Newman on the outside, he made a little contact, and around he went. Boy, Jimmy Johnson and Regan Smith scooted through on the inside. One of the hardest things to do on any racetrack we go to is go in a corner side by side with another car, because this is what happens so many times. You know, Mike, Ryan Newman had four consecutive top five finishes here at Phoenix coming into this race. Gonna be tough to, to keep that streak going. Newman to the pits along with Bobby Labonte, who was the last car on the lead lap. See any damage on the right front fender of Carl? It looks it's crinkled, crink, wrinkled a little bit. And Jeff Hammond had uh, quite a viewpoint on that one. Yes, I did, Mike. We just got here just outside of turn four, watching the cars come through on the restart, and everybody's just pushing and shoving, and all of a sudden we saw the 39 car go around, covered in tire smoke, everybody here watching the race, and this part of the racetrack, because it's getting so slick, we talked about it all day, all day long, everything is happening here. You see the guys, you hear them picking the throttle up and really starting to get really aggressive late in the race. It's right now, it's, it's go time. You can really feel it here off of turn four. I, I tell you something else. I don't like that fender on that 99 car either, Jeff. That thing is all wrinkled up and down on the tire. There's uh, Jeff Hammond making his arrival. Just as uh, Ryan Newman made his arrival with the turn four wall. I'm like you, Daryl. On the 99 cars, we see Ryan Newman back on pit road, still on the lead lap. Carl Edwards' is right front fender may not be rubbing now, but when it starts traveling up the speed, may be an issue there. Travis Quaffle gets the free pass on this, the seventh caution flag of the day. Next week, NASCAR on Fox heads for Vegas. I say take a chance and see what happens. Listen, we're in Las Vegas, man. You got to roll the dice. You got to gamble a little bit. I like it. Uh, roll the dice. All right. Ready to race in the Nevada desert. Traffic jam in Las Vegas and not the one down on the strip. Boogity, boogity. Let's go racing Vegas style, boys! Cobalt Tools 400 next Sunday with NASCAR on Fox. Michael Walter. Edwards is scrambling. He was in the back. He had the fastest car, you might think, Chris, because he's made his way all the way up towards the top five. He's pushing it hard. What happens? He makes a mistake, and Ryan Newman pays for that mistake. But I'm telling you, over the next 50, 50 laps or so, you're going to see more and more pushing it hard, guys. Oh, yeah, you got you to gotta let it all hang out now, baby. This, this is showtime. You know, with 53 laps to go and 23 drivers on the lead lap, you pretty much have about made your bed as far as not coming back to pit road. Now Ryan Newman stayed on the lead lap, the last of 23 cars. Denny Hamlin is our leader. 25 lead changes today. We just finished up the seventh caution flag. And that pace car is going to scoot off to pit road. Hamlin and Keslowski. Toyota and Dodge leading the Chevy of Harvick and the Ford of Greg Biffle. 52 laps to go when they come to the line. We're back under green. Keslowski's led three laps so far today. He could be about to lead his fourth. Boy, he overdrove that corner oh, no. all the way almost up against the wall. Dirty. Hamlin. Dirty tires got in there too hot. Probably a little stake right over there, maybe from the accident or at least dirt on the track. Keslowski's best finish here, 15th in this race last year. And he goes from the lead back to sixth. Here's how it happened. Oh, you can just see how hard, how much harder he drove in the corner than Denny Hamlin in 11 did. You saw that gap open a little bit. Just overdrove it a tad. So Hamlin is the leader. Biffle is second, trying to hold off Harvick. 
Then Ambrose settles into fourth ahead of Johnson. We got a ways to go, but this would be such great redemption for that 11 car because I feel like here two years ago, that's what this racetrack bit them on fuel mileage, cost him a win, and he eventually lost the championship. And Krista, here comes Harvick. He's up into second place. And the big question, Mike, how much did he save? Crew Chief Shane Wilson came on the radio and said, we needed both of those cautions. We are only one lap to the good, and it's a good thing because Kevin can't save now. He's in a dogfight. He has to race. And I feel that's the case with all these drivers. It was marginal. The number of cautions we've run should be pretty good now. Yeah, because we're talking nine laps. I mean, that's two gallon of fuel, Larry. I, I, that's a lot of, that's a lot to ask. Carl Edwards alongside the 78 of Regan Smith. Harvick second. And NASCAR fans voted at Sprint.com slash speed on the driver they want us to go in car with. Dale Earnhardt Jr. is the top choice, so let's ride along on board and listen in. Dale Jr. on the lead lap, running in 20th. Get unlimited access through the NASCAR Sprint Cup mobile app on your Android-powered device only on the Sprint Network. Learn more at Sprint.com slash speed. Steve Burns. Mike, good news for Jimmy Johnson. Chad Canals, the crew chief, just said you are okay on fuel the rest of the way. Jimmy re relayed and saying the car is a little bit loose on the restart, but it is coming. Yeah, I saw him sideways a couple of laps there in a row, but all of a sudden the car tightened up, like he said, and now he's trying hard to get by Greg Biffle in the 16th. And just remember, 120 laps ago, he was on pit road two or three times under caution with possibly lug stug issues from a loose wheel. Denny Hamlin dominated here in November of 2010, leading 190 laps, but wound up 12th. Forty one laps to go and all that time we were side by side Jimmy Johnson and Brad Keselowski were side by side and still are here they come into frame in the back stretch fighting. Yeah we were watching Jimmy Johnson and Greg Biffle fight Biffle got clear Jimmy and then here came Keselowski in the two with Kyle Busch lurking there waiting to see what's going to happen. And even though Kyle Busch didn't change but two tires. On one of those sides of his race car, he has 20 lap fresher tires than those drivers he's racing right now. And that could be a big difference, especially if they went with left sides that last time. I think Kevin Harvick, once he got the OK that he's going to probably be all right on fuel, I think he'll turn the, the wick up a little bit here when it comes time. Hamlin the leader by eight tenths of a second. Here's Kevin Harvick in second. He's led a lot of laps today. Boy, that fifth place battle just won't quit. Keslowski, Johnson, and Kyle Busch. Listen to these lap times of the first four cars. 27-23, 27-23, 27-24, 27-26. Those first four cars. Now it sorts out for a little bit. Keslowski has cleared Johnson. And that opens the door for Kyle Busch on the inside. Did just get the information when Kyle Busch did come to pit road on lap 247. Two left side tires for his car. Johnson tries it again. Well, Jimmy Johnson has a fast car when he has the whole racetrack to work with. But when he gets pinched down on the bottom and he can't let the car drift up off the corner, he can't make the pass. The first forward in the race and having a great race. Marcus Ambrose has one Sprint Cup victory. He came on the road course.
but with that backstretch the way it configured this race is a little like a road course dick that's where he is a specialist and despite fighting a loose race car early he's positioned very well in third here yeah and he's run well all day long mike this would be the first ever oval track win that he has had in big league nascar most importantly todd parrott his crew chief just told me that ambrose has enough gas to make it to the end and, and dick reported earlier earlier that they were a little marginal, but I think he's one of those drivers that's benefited from all these number of caution laps that we've had since he pitted. One win on the road course, two third place finishes on ovals at Dover and at Bristol. Mark just, Martin has tried for 15 laps to get past Joey Logano and finally does to move up to 13. And Johnson's back after Keselowski one more time for fifth. Jimmy's been here a couple of times. He was there with uh, Greg Biffle lap after lap. Couldn't make it. Kozowski's going to keep him pinned down. This all happened six and a half seconds behind the leader. Yeah, it's like Brad Kozlowski in the two gets a good run off the corner, but he was pinched up that time. Darrell didn't get quite the run, but he's going to fight back going off into three. Jimmy's just about going to have to force him up the hill and get him get him up in that loose stuff to get by him because Jimmy just cannot make that pass on the bottom. Kozlowski's got the momentum around the outside, that high line. You get a lot of straightaway speed and get off the corner really well. Keeps that guy on the inside, pinched down, can't make it. And here comes Kyle to the bottom. If Jimmy had to kind of lock it up going into the corner. That's one of the frustrating things about this joint right here. You can have a fast car and you have you can't do anything with it. Yeah, I think Kyle Busch in that 18 had been laying back there feeling like that he was quicker than those two drivers. Took advantage of it there with Jimmy Johnson a second ago. Well, it looked from the onboard as if Jimmy might have got into the back of Brad getting into the corner and that opened the door for the 18. I don't know if he did or not, but I know he'd like to. Johnson coming back on Kyle Busch. It's just such a there's so much more speed in that high line. You get off the corner there. You see like the 18 car does with a little more straightaway speed. It's just almost impossible to make a pass. Let's check back up front where Denny Hamlin driving a Toyota for coach Joe Gibbs has a one second lead on Kevin Harvick. I think these guys right here, I know if I know Denny Hamlin pretty well, he's looking in his mirror. He's trying to maintain that gap. That's all he's trying to do. Main, mind the gap. Let's check in the leader's pit, Matt. And Mike, Darian Grubb just told him about five laps ago, continue to save me about one second off the throttle per straightaway. Gentle on, gentle off, just keep saving me fuel. Same thing for Greg Biffle, back in fourth. They're telling him, back off early, save us fuel. Mike. And when you've got a second lead, Mike, I, I think it, it, it's a little easier to do that. Carl Edwards, Regan Smith, 10th and 11th with Jeff Gordon in 12th. We saw Denny Hamlin there, guys, and uh, Denny is really aggressive here in, in uh, Phoenix. But remember back to Daytona, he was the only one going on the outside, making moves, pushing other cars. Really aggressive from the green flag at Daytona. It continues here at Phoenix. He feels like this race two years ago could have cost him a championship. He wants to redeem himself today. Daryl, his attitude, we golf together, and he can't beat me at golf. But, man, he doesn't think anybody could beat him on the racetrack. No, he, he, and, he and his new uh, crew chief, Darian Grubb, I like those personalities. They match up. Darian's a smart guy, and Denny will listen to him, and they're getting some really good results. How about Regan Smith in the 78, upper right of your screen? Trying to battle Jeff Gordon for 11th place. He ran, led a few laps, ran up the top five early. And your pole sitter, Mark Martin, is part of that battle. Yeah, Regan Smith in the 78, he's been slipping back a little bit over the last few laps. It wasn't but about 10 laps ago, he was running up at about the eighth position. But I mentioned this earlier, and I want to bring it up again. The, the D-cell fuel cutoff, that's something that's in the mapping. Uh-oh, what happened to the 31? down uh, below the yellow line. He's got a problem. And is off the pace. Jeff Burton. Off pace. Is he going to try to run it out or head to pit road? He's staying on the racetrack. Not the light fuel pressure bolts or anything, right, Jeff? No, we're all good there. He was in eighth place. All right, I think back to Jamie McMurray and the one that had that engine issue a number of laps ago. The engines for Jeff Burton, Jamie McMurray, they come from the same engine company 
Earnhardt Childress racing engines. And it almost sounds like the same symptoms. We're not seeing the smoke out of Burton's car, though. All right, we'll stay side by side with 25 laps to go. And Denny Hamlin nursing a seven tenths of a second lead over Kevin Harvick. Kevin Harvick has led the most laps here in Phoenix, but Denny Hamlin leads right now with just 21 to go. Remember Harvick's nickname, The Closer. We've had a record, a Phoenix record, 15 different leaders in this race. And the irony, when Tony Stewart, the Sprint Cup champion, had problems, his championship crew chief, Darian Grubb, who was there before, helped Denny Hamlin take the lead, Michael Waltrip. He has that now at a track that, as Daryl Waltrip told us on the pre-race show, is a gambling track. And the cars that are up front, Chris, they did just that. They gambled on that last caution. They didn't come to pit road, even though they knew they didn't have enough gas. They counted on some additional caution laps so that they could make it to the finish. A gamble by Denny Hamlin. Will it pay off, DW? Mike, let me ask you something, Michael. Do you see any fire coming out the tailpipes today? None at all. And you know why? Because all you got to do to save fuel with this electronic fuel injection is get your foot off the gas, and it'll automatically cut the fuel to the engine off. So all these guys have got it. They're going through a learning process today, and they're figuring that out right here this afternoon. But that's why you don't see all the flames out the tailpipe. We're not burning excessive fuel. And Marcus Ambrose is slow in the back straightaway. His great third place run is going to come undone. Well, it's a hot afternoon here in the desert. And uh, if you're going to have problems, you're going to have them late here in the race. Uh, Jeff Burton has taken his car to pit road. Engine, I hear it go by and it just hurt it. You can see it. 18 laps from the finish line. Smoke billows. Yeah, we're into number nine. We're seeing the same. Stay out there. I don't think so, buddy. Now we were seeing the same thing there that we saw on McMurray's engine in the one smoke coming out the right side exhaust pipes. You saw the fourth place battle ongoing. Jimmy Johnson gets past Brad Keselowski for four. He finally got by him that time. He slid the Brad slid up the hill high enough that uh, Jimmy Johnson 48 was able to get by. Bad news for Johnson. With 17 laps to go, he is still nine seconds behind the leader. Ambrose has come to pit road. That's a tough break. Hamlin's lead shrinking slightly from seven to six tenths of a second. Kevin Harvick is coming. Yeah, Har Harvick ran a tenth quicker that time, Daryl. Yeah, I think I, I've really watched Harvick, and I'm not so sure he's not playing possum right now. I'm not so sure he's not going to wait till about eight, ten laps to go and really put the pressure on Denny Hamlin. We've talked for two weeks about these new driver crew chief pairings and the need to build trust and build confidence. That won't be a problem for Harvick because Shane Wilson was Harvick's crew chief when he won the nationwide championship in 2006. So they have a lot of history together, including 13 checkered flags. There's your race leader, Denny Hamlin, and his new crew chief, Darian Grubb. Matt? Mike, Denny told me that this really would be the start of the season, just trying to learn the chemistry and the nuances between himself and Darian Grubb. He also said coming into Phoenix, it's like a huge load off his shoulders. Typically, he'll come in to Phoenix after a rough Daytona, but a top five there, he sits solidly in the points. They don't have to dig themselves out of a huge hole. It could be a big day if they could pull off a win here at PIR. We're watching Denny Hamlin on the left view screen with Kevin Harvick closing. Always think about Dale Earnhardt. He was the intimidator, and he loved to intimidate. What do we call the 29 guy? The closer. So, and some guys just like to live up to the reputation. And right now, I'm not so sure that our friend there, Mr. Harvick, is not trying to live up to his reputation. The gap, though, is growing slightly. It was six tenths. Now it's nine tenths of a second. Marcus Ambrose takes his car to the garage, joining Jeff Burton with late race engine trouble. 13 laps to go. And Mike, with now 12 to go, Denny Hamlin has a decent clean racetrack in front of him. There's a lot of drivers up there, but I don't think it's drivers that'll push the envelope because they are much more than them on the lead lap or more than one lap down. Greg Biffles Ford is now the third place car, six seconds back. Jimmy Johnson, nine seconds in arrears. You will see the uh, gap at the top of your screen. And you see it growing just slightly. 
between seven and nine tenths of a second, Hamlin to Harvick. And, and again, I mean, I know that Harvick's trying to close. That's his that's his nickname. But also that guy in that 11 car, I'm not so sure he's not playing a little cat and mouse too, keeping that gap. Denny Hamlin, as Michael told you, loves to golf. In fact, he's relocated his winter home uh, to here in the Phoenix Scottsdale area so he can get plenty of time out on the course. Boy, I just saw that 29 car Harvey come off turn four. He's after it. The back hung out. He's digging, man. Well, he knows he has to because the starter just put 10 fingers in the air, 10 to go. I, I think they're going to run up on some cars that could have an effect on this whole outcome right here. There's a group of cars right in front of these fellas right here that they're going to run up on that they got to get through. And they are leaving Greg Biffle behind. Biffle now seven and a half back. Jimmy Johnson nine and Brad Keselowski ten and a half. Kyle Busch 11 seconds back. Martin Truex is going to get a good finish out of this. That strategy worked out pretty well for Truex. He's seven. Carl Edwards, Jeff Gordon, Regan Smith the top ten. Kind of nice to everybody's got everybody's got a piece of the top five, Mike. A Toyota leads a Chevrolet, a Ford, a Chevy, and a Dodge in the top five. Now All four makes represented. Is we're eight laps to go. I don't think we can hide the fact that there's still some drivers that may be concerned about fuel. I know one driver I got a report. He's back in eighth position, Carl Edwards in that 99 car. They're telling me that he's still a little concerned about fuel. 19 cars on the lead lap. And now traffic comes into play. Big, big close right there. And Crystal reports that Harvick, they don't have fuel gauges in these cars. They do their computations in the pits. But still, Kevin may need to save a little fuel. They work past Brendan Gaughan in the 33. And now pull up on Dave Blaney. But, Darrell, when you're Kevin Harvick and you can see Denny Hamlin in that 11 in front of you, I think with six to go, forget saving fuel. You're not saving anything right now. You got it, you got it matted, baby. If it runs out, it runs out. Kyle Busch in sixth and Martin Truex in seventh stopped 20 laps later than anybody else in the top 10. Will this race fall into their hands in these final six laps? But there's one thing about these cars. We saw it last year with Dale Jr. We've seen it with others. When they're out of fuel, they quit. They don't get that spurt and popping. They just Five quit. miles to go. You need about one gallon of that Sunoco Green E15 to make it to the flag. Yeah, these drivers get about 4.2, 4.3 miles to the gallon. And Harvick is closing. He, Imagine he, that. Half a drives. second. He drives off in the corner 10 times further than Denny Hamlin does, but Denny is better off the corner. A.J. Allmendinger just ahead of them, 19th last car on the lead lap. You can see Kevin Harvick. We're down, man. You got him. You'll get him. He's starting to move that car around a little bit. He tried a little different arc through one and two that last year. Yeah, game. he tried to get the car. He ran a little bit higher, hoping there'd be a little speed up there. I don't believe it really is. Right now, it's just staying pretty, pretty, pretty much the same gap. Harvick's running out of time. Four laps to go. He is 44 one hundredths of a second behind Hamlin. Who works under Almondinger. Oh, Almondinger is definitely slowing down Hamlin a little bit. That's going to allow Harvick to gain some down that back right here. Harvick picks up a tenth. He got him. He gained a bunch right there. All right, he's coming. Two to go here. Let's get him. One car length, and the closer is there, knocking on the door. I tell you, if he if he doesn't run out of gas. Two to go. You get him. Come on, man. Up on that wheel. I love it. Get up on that wheel. And look at Kevin Harvick drove that thing down in there. It's almost like he's found a little something down there in one and two. Loses it off of two. This loss. Uh oh. oh he's out of gas. He's out of gas. He's out of fuel. We knew it was going to be close. Denny Hamlin will get the white flag this time. Carl Edwards is out of gas. White flag for Hamlin. Can he make it one more mile? One, one lap short for the 29. Watch for others. Buddy, all the way back. 78's out over on the back over there. Harvick still second, three seconds back. Hamlin with a three-second lead and eight seconds up on Greg Biffle. 
Hamlin's home free. And for his 18th career win, Denny Hamlin delivers. Checker flag and Phoenix. Harvey's going to hang on for second. How about Comes that? Harvick, 5.8 back. He makes it to the line just ahead of Greg Biffle, Jimmy Johnson, and Brad Keselowski. Kyle Busch, Martin Truex, sixth and seventh. Jeff Gordon, Mark Martin, and Joey Logano, the top ten. Woo! <laughs> That's a nail biter, boys. <laughs> The closer got to the door and it would not open. I tell you, I, it's probably a good thing he, I ran out of fuel for Denny Hamlin's sake. Look at this. Good team meeting right there. And how about champion crew chief of 2011, Darian Grubb, picking up just about where he left off at the end of last season with Tony Stewart. Yes, sir. Headed for the winner circle. So happy for Darian Grubb. Yes, they didn't even know if they were going to make the chase. He was told halfway through the chase, you will not be returning to Stuart Haas, still kept his head down and won those five races and won the championship. Joe Gibbs got him a jewel right there, buddy. Hamlin led three times for 61 laps, including the final 59 circuits. Out of gas. Um, yeah, he could be out of gas. <laughs> out of gas. <laughs> <laughs> Can I get a push to the station, please? Brad Keselowski in the two that finished fourth, he was out of fuel. Martin Trix Jr. had to push him to pit road. I don't think this crew will mind pushing this 11 car though. No, he got it. He reset his, he got, he reset his, he's good to go. And that takes us back to what happened to Tony Stewart. When he shut his car off, we are told that he tripped the relay on the electronic engine management system and that requires a reset process. He did get the car running again. Wound up two laps down, but here is the driver that's headed for victory lane. And Mike, I think that uh, Denny Hamlin has had his uh, hit the reset button too. This guy's going to be hard to deal with. All three Joe Gibbs Toyotas finished in the top ten today. Wow, what a finish! More to come with NASCAR on Fox right after this. And that's a car Denny Hamlin, the celebrating continues. He won one race last year after eight the previous year when the championship slipped away from him after the Phoenix race. But he's in victory lane celebrating now. And our Steve Burns is down there with him. Well, Denny Hamlin, congratulations. I heard you tell your new crew chief, Darian Grubb, thank you for making me competitive again. Last year was a long year, but you're off to a great start. How'd you do it? Man, it's... Uh... If you would ask me at the beginning of the day, I said I would have took a top 15 finish. Uh, just an amazing job by this FedEx office uh, team. It's just, uh, he just kept working on it. And, and every time he worked on it, it got better. And uh, can't thank them enough. And my, you know, this win is for uh, Johnny Farino. He, he lost his dad. He's one of our head mechanics. Um, our thoughts and prayers are with him. He lost his dad yesterday. And, uh, you know, we're thinking about him. This is, uh, he told me before he left that, uh, only a trophy will do, and uh, we're going to bring it back home to them. So thank them. I've got to thank everyone from FedEx, uh, Toyota, Sprint. Uh, FedEx has been great. Uh, Nike, everyone at the Jordan brand, thank you. Um, Coke, Wiley X, and the fans. Gosh, it feels good. Uh, someone asked me uh, in the FedEx suite, one of the employees asked me earlier today, they said, uh, do you know where Victory Lane's at here? I said, I don't know, but they can point me to it after the race. Denny, how important is this win for you and for this 11 team with a new crew chief, Darian Grubb? Huge momentum. I mean, we've never been in this position this early in the season. We've always uh, struggled. We've always taken our time, you know, five, six races in before we hit our stride. But uh, this is particularly not my type of racetrack, new pavement. I'm, I'm usually better at saving tires, but uh, uh, he made me a winner today. Enjoy the victory. Thank you. Chris. Thanks, Steve. Denny led the most laps at the Daytona 500, wound up fourth, but he's your points leader after two races. First time for him since two years ago, late in the year in Phoenix, as he continues to celebrate with his new crew chief. Now, the closer, Kevin Harvick, was closing in but ran out of fuel. And for Kevin Harvick, who led the most laps today, 88, a tough finish. Chris Devota is standing by. Kevin Harvick had to save a whole lot of fuel and then stalk his prey in the end. Just one lap short, you're still able to have a smile. What did you learn today? I have a feeling there's a big picture in this. Well, you know, just to obviously finishing second, racing for a win in a place we ran 
you know, 25th or 30th, whatever we ran here last year, and just uh, was really nervous coming here about how we were going to run. Just want to thank everybody from Bream, Jimmy Johns, Budweiser, Chevrolet, everybody, Hunt Brothers, uh, that, that helps keep this car on the racetrack, everybody from Ollie's uh, and all these guys. Uh, you cut the fuel lines that close, uh, you're, you're figuring it right. So they proud of all my guys, and to come to a place like this where we struggle so much and, and race for a win is hopefully what sets the tone for the year. Thanks, Kevin. Exciting day here in Phoenix. A lot of guys on different strategies. How concerned were you about fuel, Jimmy? We were concerned because I, I rarely get good fuel mods. So, um, you know, we were definitely concerned. And once we uh, cleared the two, and we just kind of fell into a rhythm at that point and, and tried to make sure that we got home and got some points. Uh, leaving Daytona 42nd on the board wasn't, uh, wasn't a good way to start the season. But very proud of the effort. We had a very, very fast Cobalt Tool Chevrolet. Um, unfortunately, a little hiccup on pit road. Um, you know, kept us from really racing for the win, but we still fought back and got into it. So uh, very proud of the effort, very proud of our race team. Patented day for the 48 team. Nice recovery from Daytona. And Denny Hamlin with the victory in Phoenix as we check the unofficial results. A guy who has leaned on Michael Jordan, spoke to him about advice on being a champion. Of course, his Super Bowl head coach, Joe Gibbs, who's also his team owner, who's won championships in NASCAR. He's even gone to a sports psychologist to sort things out, guys, after uh, letting that championship slip away. Maybe back in the picture as we go up to Larry, Darrell, and Mike at DW. If you're into numbers, and I know you are, number 11, the car number 11 tied for all-time wins, 198 with the 43 uh, number. And, of course, uh, Denny Hamlin, a number that you had, Cale Yarborough, number 11, the winner today. Yeah, pretty excited. 17 last week, 11 this week. So that, <laughs> that kind of works for me. But Hamlin is re-energized. I saw it at Daytona. He saw him aggressive at Daytona. He comes here near day. He gets the win. That team is going to be on the roll. That's a championship crew chief, by the way. Yeah, I really believe Joe Gibbs Racing is re-energized. They have that new engine program in place with TRD. Three drivers in the top ten. Of course, Denny Hamlin, after two races, he's our points leader. What a wild finish here in Phoenix. Questions about electronic engine management. And by the way, all those suggestions I had for a new name for the backstretch, the one I liked best was a town close to here, Gila Bend. Now, Tony Stewart was one of those drivers who had problems with the electronic engine management system today. Let's hear from him. Well, your, your thoughts on, on what happened to you today? Uh, I mean, I just shut the car off like we did at Daytona to save fuel and turn it back on, and it never refired. So I, that's all I can tell you. I don't know why it didn't refire. Um, all right, it's time for the I honestly don't know. I mean, it's not my department. <laughs> but, um, you know. I just turned the switch back on and it never refired, so uh, I don't know why that was, but um, it definitely cost us a good day. Same thing happened to Joey Logano at Daytona, and the engineers have the computers plugged into this car already. And in Scotchdale is when Denny Hamlin, as he celebrates in victory lane, had a 20 handicap. He said he got it to single digits after working seven weeks at his golf game in Arizona. Not a bad driver either. We'll have more in a moment. Watching NASCAR on Fox. Promotional considerations provided by Along with Michael Waltrip, Chris Fires, as we look at the FedEx car of Denny Hamlin, his 11 Toyota in victory lane of the Subway Fresh Fit 500. He was the most fit, Michael. He said it was self-discovery time, those seven weeks playing golf, getting away, still in a cloud from that championship that slipped away two years ago. He looks like a different driver. It slipped away right here at Phoenix, Chris. They ran out of gas, they pitted, and everybody else didn't. He lost the race, eventually lost the championship. I didn't like who Denny Hamlin was through most of 2011. He didn't seem to be focused on his job as much as he usually was. Well, he fixed all that over the winter. He totally focused on his racing. He understands how important a tough mental picture is to be successful, and he has it all going on right now. Everything but the golf game. I still don't <laughs> see still the, double di the single-digit handicap. And I got that first points lead since uh, two years ago here in Phoenix. And uh, as we take a look at the points, let's look forward to Las Vegas next week where Tony, I'm sorry, Denny Hamlin has never won a race, but the first two races we've had so far 
from fire and rain in Daytona to sun and empty gas tanks in Arizona. Yeah, and when we go to, to uh, Vegas, you're going to have to look for those Fords to be a really big part of the story, just like they were down in Daytona. The big track at Daytona, those Fords were fast. Here on a short track like Phoenix races, we had all different manufacturers fighting for the front. It could flip back to the in favor of the Ford camp when we get to Vegas. And with the celebration of Denny Ham, when you always wonder what could have been, you heard from a disappointed Tony Stewart and Kevin Harvick. Those gas prices, though, they're getting... They're get all of us because you wonder if he if the closer had that had enough fuel could Denny have been able to hold off Kevin Harvin tonight on Fox we hope you tune in and enjoy Bob's Burgers later the Simpsons family guy and our favorite American dad and next Sunday we already touched on the Las Vegas it all begins at 2 30 Eastern with the Cobalt Tools 400 we always have a good time as do the drivers and all the fans remember that was Carl Edwards only win uh, last year when he outdueled Tony Stewart and of course that turned out to be the battle for the championship but it looks like Denny Hamlet is part of that mix now as Denny holds off Harvick for the victory for Darrell Walter Larry Mack Mike Joy Krista Steve Dick Matt Jeff Hammond Michael Walter our entire production crew we'll see you next Sunday we're always glad to have you a part of NASCAR on Fox I'm Chris Myers and thanks for being there drivers start your engines